Good evening. Welcome to the Northampton City Council meeting of April 2nd, 2015. I'm City Council President Bill Dwight and I'll be presiding tonight. Um, we traditionally open, well, before we convene, we open with public <coughs> comment, um, which looks like we're going to have a miss tonight. Is there anyone who actually would like to speak in public comment tonight? No. So we will have no public comment. Um, so in in light of that, I'm going to ask the secretary to call the roll, please. Council Carney. Present. Council Yes, here. Council Klein. Here. Councilor Lavarge. Present. Councilor Murphy. Here. Councilor O'Donnell. Here. Councilor Sheriff. Here. Councilor Sheffield. Here. All right. We have everyone here but Councilor Adams, who is away with excuse. Um, and we have a quorum, for sure. Uh, I'm going to have to make an appointment for the enrollment committee. Um, Councilor Lavarge, you up for that? Yep. All right. So, Councilor Klein and Councilor Lavarge. The enrollment committee, the swearing in ceremony will come <laughs> soon, I'm sure. So, um, uh, first up, on uh, order of business, I have uh, an announcement regarding a public hearing for a poll petition um, received by National Grid, and that will be here April 16, 2015, 7.05 p.m., and this is a proposed poll location on Elm Street. So that, you know, put that down in your date book. We're going to delay the communications from the mayor because right now he's attending a ceremony of his daughter's induction into the Honor Society. So uh, he will be showing up late. Susan Wright has shown up, but she'll be here to talk about financial orders and the like. She's not prepared to speak about anything else that the mayor wants to communicate, I'm sure. There are no proclamations, resolutions, recognitions, but there might be one minute announcements. Councilor Spector. Yes, I actually have two. Uh, the first is on Tuesday night at 5 o'clock. There will be a public forum on, I'm going to use the, the, what the topic is, not the fancy name of the ordinance itself, but the, the forum will be on single-use plastic bag ban in the city of Northampton. And just for folks, that's a ban on the use of the very thin plastic bags at the point of sale at the cash register. And it's a forum where folks can come and express their support their opposition their concerns ask questions uh, it will be moving forward and coming before the council sometime later in the month i would think or in early may and um, i would hope people especially people have concerns about it or in opposition come and speak to it, it we've we have councillor adams and i have been moving this forward for about a year and we've kind of been searching out the opposition i know it's there we'd love to hear from you and hear your concerns um, and see if there are any ways that we could amend this as it moves forward. What Any is the date? date? Location it time is thing. Tuesday, which is April 7th, 5 o'clock. It will be here in council chambers. And it is a council sponsored uh, public forum. My second announcement is on Thursday, also at 5 o'clock. I believe it's, it's going to be in the hearing room. The um, City Council Public Works Committee will have a meeting that will focus on looking at the proposed water rate changes that have come forward from the Department of Public Works. This will be a time again for people to come and ex ask the questions that they need to ask, understand why th that, that proposal has come forward uh, to express support, opposition, or anything else they want to do at that meeting. So that again, that is 5 o'clock next Thursday. That will be in the hearing room in City Hall. Um, and I hope people will attend that. That's April, I mean April, April 9th. 9th. Actually, as a point of order, actually, that, that hasn't been referred yet, so we're That's say true. tentatively. Tentatively. <laughs> if should it somehow we the don't referral. make the referral uh, this evening, we will have to discuss yeah. what we do at that point. I don't want to presume any Imagine we will be having it. Yes. Uh, are there any other one-minute announcements? Councilor Klein. Uh, the Northampton Arts Council has announced its 2015 grants to artists and uh, the deadline is May 1st. But before that, I'm trying to read through this really quickly, sorry. Before that, there is an informational meeting about applying um, and that is happening on April 14th um, from 4 to 6 p.m. Uh, in the City Hall hearing room on the second floor of City Hall. Um, but you can get more information at NorthamptonArtsCouncil.org. Thank you. Any other announcements? 
Um, I've heard from most of you relative to the Memorial Day parade. Is, is it, uh, are you, Councilor Specker, you'll be there? Yeah. Council I don't, I'm not sure. You're yeah. not sure? Okay. Well, that's good. That's a, that's a pretty good. That's a pretty good showing. Okay. I'll be able to respond to the Veterans Council on that. Um, no other one minute announcements. My goodness. All right. Um, <clears throat> so let's see. No presentations are scheduled. Um, we have uh, a street petition for Ridgeview Road, and this is to re uh, refer to the Public Works Commission and planning. Move to refer. Second. Any discussion on the referral? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Okay. Now I'll accept a motion for the approval of minutes from the previous meeting. Move to approve. Second. Uh, any discussion on the minutes or amendments or changes? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? I think I have to abstain since I've been here. Is that true? We actually look that up and you don't no, no, have no. to abstain. Uh, right. It's odd. I always presume that you did, but um, you don't have to. But it's certainly up to you, however you prefer. Right. But is that your choice? I. <laughs> she, 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 okay. Go with the I. Okay. No <laughs> objections, no abstentions. So those are the minutes are approved. Um, now we go to uh, we're going to recess. Um, so we're recessing the finance <laughs> committee. That doesn't mean everyone run out. Uh, and I'm. Ceding the gavel over to Council Murphy, who presides over the Finance Committee. So as soon as Pam is ready to call a roll, we'll get moving. We just moved way too We're fast. Moving right along tonight. <coughs> Council Shara? Here. Council LaBarge? Present. Council Murphy? Here. All present and account? Except for Council Adams. So, um, the first thing would be a motion on minutes of March 5th. Move to approve. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Um, the next is um, an order to accept provisions of Mass General Law Chapter 149, Section 148C regarding earned sick time. And uh, this was upon the recommendation of Councilor O'Donnell. So I'll read it and uh, then we can have our discussion. Whereas the city of Northampton recognizes the importance of providing earned sick time to its employees in order to safeguard the public health, keep the cost of health care down, and to allow workers to take care of themselves and their families. And whereas voters approved a ballot initiative question four entitled earned sick time for employees on November 4th, 2014, providing that employees may earn and use sick time if they must be absent from work for certain reasons. And whereas Northampton voters approved question four by a vote of 81% to 19%, and whereas the law allows employees to use earned sick time to look after their own medical needs or the needs of family members or to address <coughs> issues related to domestic violence, and whereas the law requires an employer to provide a minimum of one hour earned sick time for every 30 hours worked by an employee, and whereas workers employed by the city are not included under this law unless the city council votes to accept the law as required <coughs> by Article CXV of amendments to the Constitution of the Commonwealth. Now, therefore, it be ordered that the city council accepts the provision of Mass General Law Sap Chapter 149, Section 148C, effective July 1, uh, 2015. And I apologize for not being really great with Roman numerals. <laughs> Um, so we have a motion put on the floor. I don't have the order. It's not in the, in the last meeting. Oh, so it's for, it's in the if you were looking electronically, it's from the last meeting. It's in the uh, packet. Okay, meeting. thank you. And it, the order is just what I read. This, uh, actually, you're the sponsor. We'll let you uh, speak sure, to your. Sure. Yeah. Um, and also, is it supposed to be on the agenda? Right. It should be. I think perhaps some of us don't have it on the agenda. But it's not on the it's agenda. Not on the agenda. Finance committee. Uh, it's not. Well, I don't have it. It's uh, It's on the finance committee agenda. It may not be on the meeting agenda. Okay. I have a copy of the finance committee agenda. Council of Arch. I don't have a paper copy. You have one right there. Yeah. I can just show it to her. You know. Take her. I'll walk it over to you, Council. Take her the uh, recommendation here, as well. Download it here. Should oh. I? Should I? Yeah, please. 
Here's the finance um, agenda. I, I think Councilor Murphy pretty much explained it. Um, the ballot measure that passed last year um, set up a system whereby employees in the private sector can earn and use um, sick time. And the basic principle is that is something that in a good society we should offer um, our workers. There is a provision in the Constitution, one of the few probably that protects us from unfunded mandates, one of the very few, um, that requires a municipality to vote to accept the law, uh, to vote to accept any law uh, relative to new benefits for city employees. So this order would be that um, acceptance of the state law as required by the Constitution. Um, the, the state of play of, um, that we need to consider is the, the Attorney General is currently writing regulations about how this law will be implemented. I don't believe those are finished yet. And one of the virtues of having this referred to the Finance Committee as well as the Ordinance Committee is um, hopefully those regulations will be finalized soon and we can take those into account, I would suggest, before proceeding with a vote. Um, so, and also the mayor is, is, you know, needs to see those regulations and we need to have a firm understanding of how much this will cost, how many employees it will affect, um, what is the floor, you know, if you work three hours for the city in a whole year, do you qualify? These are unanswered questions. And so I, uh, my suggestion would be we wait a little further, a little more, uh, before at taking action on this. But that's what this is for. I'm happy to answer any questions based on the, the general principles here. Basically, um, it's something we believe in in Northampton. It's a mark of a good society. Providing this um, for our workers is important. A lot of the workers may be found in the school department, for example, in the cafeteria, for example, where people could be sneezing on your food if they're sick. Uh, it would be far better to allow them sick time. Um, so that's where it is now. Uh, Councilor Dwight. Uh, just for uh, uh, Councilor Donald's correct in, in, in his entire assessment and the Attorney General that had promised or it suggested the possibility that a decision would be made by March. As I recall, March left us a couple of days ago, and we still haven't heard anything. <coughs> uh, but there are, they are working on it. This is the nature of referendum vote, uh, unfortunately, or referenda, that um, the devil's in the details. And the details, as, we can, as proven by, say, medical marijuana, takes a long time. It's been three years since that vote has passed, and it is yet to be we've yet to open up a clinic. So uh, Councilor O'Donnell's proposal is in anticipation of this so that we will be, I believe, the first community um, to pass this. And given the fact that the preponderance of the votes that came from this community, I think it was 81 percent, as I think you mm -hmm. cited, 81 mm -hmm. percent in this community voted for that, it seems very appropriate to, to move what it makes sense to move on that. Uh, uh, I would just like to thank the councillor for bringing this forward. It's uh, very important that we address this uh, big gap in the coverage to public employees when, as we've just heard from the council president, uh, all those in the private sector will gain these benefits and, and it was voted on so overwhelmingly by the voters of the city of Northampton. It's only appropriate that those who work for the city are able to access those same benefits. So thank you. Thank you. Any other comment? Uh, <laughs> oh, um, um, please, can you step up though so you can are join you us on television? Are you postponing this to the next um, meeting? I, I guess the yeah. question I would ask is, do you want to leave it in finance or do you want to send it to the full council without recommendation and then have it reappear at the count on the council agenda once all the things are known so it doesn't have to come back here? We'll leave that for you to ponder for a second. Well, I mean, I, either way, I think we need substantial information before making an informed decision. So I, I defer to the chair of finance. I'm happy to keep it in finance because, you know, we'll be able to deal with it at the next meeting anyway. So. And then perhaps a motion to postpone and. I think uh, it, I, I yeah. texted the mayor and he would like to postpone in finance. the next finance committee meeting. There so I, I, oh, I can't make any motions. <laughs> but you, I Your neighbor can. Motion. <laughs> a motion to postpone. Move to postpone. <laughs> and uh, 
do we have an idea <coughs> uh, to when, Susan? To our to the next uh, to ne next, next meeting. Budget. You think is going to next, right. next, 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 next? Do we have a second meeting. for that in finance? Second. Yes. No. I, I don't know. I have to agree with the counselor. I think it's very important that we get that information that he's waiting for. Does that sound like a second? That sounds like else? a second. I think it's a second. All right. Any discussion? All in favor of postponement? Aye. Aye. Of this one. All right. Thank you. Uh, the next one uh, is upon recommendation of the mayor order that $264,200 of borrowing authority authorized under the loan order approved May 15, 2000. And I'm assuming that's 14 because we have it May 15, 2015. Yet. Uh, for the acquisition of land in Sylvester Road to expand open space and land preservation in the Sawmill Hills area be rescinded as the city has received a land self-help grant uh, for the amount of the acquisition. Uh, do we have a motion on this one? In finance? Make a motion. Second. Second. All right. Any discussion on this? It's another successful uh, grant project. Um, will we hear any more about just about this uh, land self-help act grant? I don't see. Mr. Fiden was scooting through here, but I don't see him now. He's coming so. back. Okay. I'm just curious. Okay. And again, this is in finances. So he'll come back around in the full council meeting. So maybe he'll miraculously reappear later. Yeah. So, uh, all in favor? Aye. Opposed? No? Great. Uh, the next one, also upon the recommendation of the mayor, and we're starting into the ones that we talked about where he wants two readings tonight so we can do that bond, but that would be in the, in the full council meeting. Order that the sum of $500,000 is appropriated for street resurfacing and that to meet such appropriation, the treasurer with the approval of the mayor is authorized to borrow the $500,000 under Mass General Law Chapter 44, subsection 7.5, uh, or pursuit of any other enabling authority and to issue bonds or notes of the city thereafter, therefore, that the mayor is authorized to take any other action necessary to carry out this project. Furthermore, order that the city treasurer is authorized to file an application with the appropriate officials of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts to qualify under Chapter 44A of the General Laws and, and any and all bonds of the city authorized by this council as of the date hereof and to provide such information and execute such documents as such officials of the Commonwealth may require in connection herewith. We have a motion on this one? A motion. Second? Second. Okay. And uh, any questions for Susan on this one? Th these are the the batch of them that the mayor mentioned uh, that he was going to move move on with two readings. Yeah, please, Susan. Um, the this one and um, several others tonight are part of the bond issue. We're planning to do a bond in May. Um, the rates are really good, and our bond our um, financial advisors are you know suggesting that we go now um, because rates are going to start to inch up. And if you um, reviewed the capital plan, we have um, in the next five years of the capital plan, I think there's 500000 and then it jumps, I think, in one of the years, the out years, to $750,000 of paving. So we did 500000 in FY15. We'll do another 500000 in 16. Certainly much below what we actually need, but it's what we can afford to do right now, and it is more than we've been able to do in many years. So um, I'm just assuming this is earmarked. This this is this grant, this uh, borrowing would be earmarked for the paving purposes only. Mm -hmm. Right. This is this is simply uh, uh, five hundred for paving. Okay. Yep. Um, further questions for Susan? No. I don't know about you, but my constituents love new paving, especially during pothole season. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so um, we have had a motion on this one. All of, in favor of a positive positive recommendation. Aye. Please say aye. 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 Opposed. All right. Uh, the next one upon the recommendation of the mayor ordered the sum of $377,000 is appropriated to pay the costs of repair and improvements to the Connecticut River levee consisting of the removal of vegetation, repair of erosion, and incidental and related concrete repairs to the flood walls, and that to meet such appropriation, the treasurer with the approval of the mayor is authorized to borrow the $377,000 under Mass General Law for chapter 44, subsection 7-7, or pursuant to any other enabling authority and issue bonds or notes of the city, therefore, that the pursuant to any other enabling authority and to issue bonds or notes of the city, therefore, that the mayor is authorized to contract for and expend any federal or state aid available for this project, and the appropriate officials of the city are authorized to take any other action necessary to carry out the purposes of this order. 
further ordered that the city treasurer is authorized uh, to file an application with the appropriate officials of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts to qualify under Chapter 44A of the general laws and all bonds of the city authorized by this council uh, as of the date hereof and to provide such information and execute such documents as such officials of the Commonwealth may require. We have a motion on this one? A motion. Second. Second. All right. Any questions for Susan on this one? Hearing none. Oh, yes, please, Councilor. Susan. On the um, bonding related form that the mayor sent to all of us counselors, all the orders that have come in for two readings is because reading what has been stated here that the city's bond council for Southwest is urging us, okay, urging the mayor and city council to accelerate our bonding schedule to take advantage of current low rates. So that's what the purpose is, okay, for doing the two readings mm -hmm. of keeping that low rate on these. Right, and we would be doing a, we need to do a bond issue. You authorized borrowing for the FY15 capital plan. Much of that work has been done, that 500,000 right. that we did last year of paving. Before June 30th, we have to borrow that money. We've been, you know, we didn't have to borrow it ahead of time, but we have to borrow it before we close our books. Mm -hmm. So we're going to do a bond anyway. Because we're going to do the bond, bond our financial advisor <coughs> said, if you have more upcoming projects, you should roll them into this bond. Because every time you go out to bond, there's expenses related with that bond issuance. So the more projects you can put into the bond, the less, you know, the more that cost, that initial cost gets spread out. Right, because so. they're actually stating that it's at a low rate right now, interest, so grab it up now. They're saying, yes, they suggested we try to, I mean, they actually wanted us to go even a little faster, but we, wow. this is the best we can do. So. Thank you. Any other questions on this one? Then all in favor of a positive recommendation, please say aye. Aye. Got my agenda back. Um, you skipped so the next one, you have the. No. Yeah, I didn't have my agenda, so. Yeah, he was of, winging it. Been kind of running around without my agenda. Uh, that, that's the re the <laughs> levy. So the next one is River Road. Let's see, if we can find River Road. That's a big one. One million six oh seven million six. We got another River Road. Excellent. Okay. Stepping back one, and this is a big one. Upon the recommendation of the mayor, order that um, the order of the council adopted in June 27, 2013, approved by the mayor on July 1, 2013, appropriating $400,000 for the engineering and construction related to the stabiliza stabilization of ri the River Road retaining wall slope is hereby amended to read as follows. Order that the sum of $1,607,125 is appropriated for engineering and construction related to the stabilization of the river road retaining wall slope. That to meet such appropriation, the treasurer with the approval of the mayor is authorized to borrow $1,607,125 under Mass General, General Law Chapter 44, uh, C44, Chapter Subsection 7-7, or pursuant to any other enabling authority and to issue bonds or notes of the city therefore that the mayor is authorized to contract for, expend any federal or state aid available for this project, provided that the amount of the authorized borrowing shall be reduced by the amount of such aid received prior to the issuance of the bonds or notes under this order and shall be further reduced by any other sums received from any other sources for this project, including contributions from the town of Williamsburg, and that the appropriate officials of the city are authorized to take any other action necessary to carry out the purpose of this order. Further order that the city treasurer is authorized uh, to file an application with the appropriate officials of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts to qualify under Chapter 44A of the general laws and any and all bonds of the city authorized by this council as of the date hereof and to provide such information and execute such documents as such officials of the Commonwealth may require herewith. We have a motion on this Make one? A motion. Second. Second. All right. Uh, I can speak to I can speak to this one. Um, back in July of 2013, um, we received notification that the that um, we were going to get funding for this project and that our share would be 25 percent. So we brought an order for, forward that would provide for 25 percent. 
we actually need to borrow the, have the authorization to borrow the entire amount, but we will not be borrowing 1.6. We will only be borrowing what is our share. But because it's a reimbursement program, we have to have the authority to borrow the whole amount so that we can, you know, what, so what we'll be doing is we'll be borrowing our share in this bond issue, and then we'll take out bands, which are short-term um, interest on the remainder until the reimbursement comes in. So we will only be borrowing somewhere under four hundred thousand. Um, Councilor Dwight, yeah, our share around four hundred thousand. Our share is about four hundred, and the town of Williamsburg is committed a, somewhere around twenty-five to thirty thousand. So that will come off of our share. Their contribution counts towards our twenty-five percent. Oh, okay. Percent. So we would be committing four hundred thousand thereabouts, Minus. and. The, it, that would be offset by the contribution from Williamsburg. Right. So we'll end up borrowing um, less than 400. Mm -hmm. And uh, well, just for people who aren't familiar with this, this has been in capital improvements for a while. Um, and we were actually, what, after FEMA for some money for this? Yes. One? This is a FEMA project. Yeah. Um, this is the road that goes by Hampshire County Hospital, where the Mill River is eroding the road. And the main interconnector from Williamsburg to us for sewer is in that road. So it would cause a major problem if the river disconnected that sewer connection. Mm. So it hasn't up. been Hampshire County Hospital for several years. At this yes. Point. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, it's a sanitarium, which is <coughs> yeah. before Hampshire County Hospital. And, and that sewer pipe is actually exposed already, I believe. Yeah. yeah. So, so it's uh, a big. To do. Sorry, I've, I've dated myself. <laughs> uh, so we have a motion on this one. We did already. So any more questions? No. All right. All in favor? Aye. In finance? Aye. Aye. Okay. Good. All right. The next one is again upon the recommendation of the mayor, order that the sum of seven hundred thousand dollars is appropriated to pay the costs of conversion to LED streetlights. That to meet such appropriation, the treasurer, with the approval of the mayor, is authorized to borrow the seven hundred thousand dollars under Mass General Law, Section 44, Subsection 7-14, or pursuant to any other enabling authority, and issue bonds or notes of the city, therefore, and that the mayor is authorized to take any other action necessary to carry out the project. The city treasurer is authorized to file an application with the appropriate officials of the Commonwealth to qualify under Chapter 44A of the General Laws. Um, any and all bonds of the city authorized by this council as of the date hereof and to provide such information and execute such documents as such officials of the Commonwealth may require herewith. We have a motion on this one? Make a motion. Second? Second. Okay. Any discussion? And I think the savings actually will end up paying for this, correct, when we switch to LED lights? And uh, Yes. There's, there'll be quite significant savings. I, I believe we're borrowing this. I can't remember if it's 10 or 5 or 10 years. Um, but the savings are going to start accruing in the very first year. So, uh, just, um, th is this, I uh, presume this is citywide? This is citywide, okay. yes. Mm -hmm. Yes, um, this is um, a project that David Pomerantz and Chris Mason have been pursuing, and um, they've already gotten bids, and uh, so we're, we're ready to go. We just need to okay. do the money. Uh, Council respect. It will save us money. It's a really nice looking light, and it's environmentally friendly to do because it will cut down on our use of energy and our carbon footprint. Um, is, is the savings that's calculated, is that just in electricity or is it also that they last longer so there's less replacement? Is that part of that? I, believe, I can't remember what the amount is. I believe is. that is also part of it because okay. these bulbs have a longer mm -hmm. lifespan. Um, but definitely the um, just the energy use alone makes it, a, but, makes and it, I, and a, I can it will pay back. It's, Sorry, it's a, in fact, it's a, it's a very rapid payback. Mm -hmm. yeah because these bulbs are almost 10 times, last almost 10 times longer. Um, they consume vastly less energy. And um, actually the biggest, uh, most controversial issue surrounding these LEDs was the, what point of the spectrum will they be um, relative to warmth of light? Um, they're not going to be the orange lights that you're used to seeing. Um, they will be a uh, cooler light, but the uh, and uh, Dr. Lowenthal has asked for warm lights, but this the ones that we're getting are quite up to the, his standards. But they're the ones that are certified by the state and thus qualifying us for um, more more funding. But this this is 
this is one really robust return on investment. So, uh, Councilor. Um, I might be getting Susan into uh, Chris Mason's territory, but I'm just curious, is there not any issue with the fixtures that these bulbs are being placed in? I understood that there were only certain fixtures that could in fact take the LED bulbs. But they're replacing the fixtures. So it's replacing not just. From what I understand, yes, so you're replacing okay. the gooseneck fixtures that the, with a, so they broadcast uh, light directly down and less and less ambient light loss, um, but it's it's trading out the 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 light heads because those are that's essentially those gooseneck light heads that you see are virtually bulbs themselves. So yeah, the, that that's what accounts for. The, and 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 they will they'll be subcontracted out for maintenance as opposed to national grid, which is uh, we've relied on in the past. Mm -hmm. Councilor Barr, yes. yes, thank you, um, Susan. Uh, to me, this is one of the best orders that I've seen, and I know for a long period of time we've been looking at that whole area throughout the city <coughs> of saving energy, and I think this is great. And it is going to be, and it's going to generate a lot of savings in this city. Absolutely. And I think they also run cooler, don't they? Yes. They run a lot cooler. Yeah. For, mm -hmm. for our global yeah, they are. And they run cooler than the other. Yeah. Uh, and <laughs> and uh, mm. and if anybody wants to see them, I think there are LEDs now in the parking lot, the Armory the street. lot by they Armory are. Street, right? Those are. Yeah. I think we're converting. Okay. So all in favor of this Aye. order in finance? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Next one, again upon the recommendation of the mayor, whereas the DPW has obtained partial funding from the Community Preservation Committee for a conservation plan for the Bridge Street Cemetery, and whereas the conservation plan will cost $36,900 and $16,400 from the CPA was awarded to partially fund the project, and whereas uh, there is a request to appropriate the balance of $20,500 from the cemetery perpetual care fund and whereas the cemetery perpetual care fund has been established so that the interest earned from the cemetery income can be devoted to maintenance of the city's cemeteries and this plan will provide for an inventory and assessment of the cemetery's natural and built-in features and make specific recommendations for preservation and management of these features over the long term therefore the city council appropriates twenty thousand five hundred dollars from the cemetery perpetual care fund Conservation plan for the Bridge Street Cemetery. We have a motion on this one. Move. Second. Second. Yeah. Second. Uh, any questions for Susan on this one? No questions. I have a question. Yes. I just was hoping to get a little bit more of an explication of what this means. What a conservation plan for the cemetery means. Um, I'm not entirely familiar with the application that was made to the CPA, um, but I do know it's going to provide for an inventory and assessment um, of, the, of the cemetery, the monuments in it, um, perhaps uh, a plan for preservation, restoration. Um, I'm looking at all of the features to make long-term recommendations for how to preserve the cemetery and how to manage it. Um, I do, do not have a copy with me of their application to the CPA, but we can get that to you between now and, and, and the next vote. That would be helpful. Okay. We, we will get that to you because the oh. CPA application is going to explain exactly what the plan was to do. Councilor O'Donnell? Yeah, and if I could provide additional information, I mean, I think that is essentially correct. Um, the CP, this is something that um, many of Ward 3 are pretty excited about. Um, it was actually kind of a grassroots effort to start out with um, in Ward 3 to um, improve Bridge Street Cemetery, which is kind of a, a jewel in, in Ward 3 for us. And uh, an application was made to the CPC for many of the things that um, Ms. Wright mentioned, but not all of it was funded. Um, and so this kind of makes up what wasn't funded. So, um, you know, possible items to look at or might, that might be part of a plan that comes out of um, study of, of the cemetery would include landscaping, um, an inventory of, of the stones, the entrances, and um, uh, the way the, the fence interacts with the, with the cemetery. 
And so we provide a roadmap um, for possible, you know, rehabilitation of all, all different, different aspects, really. Um, and, you know, there may be some things that come out that are surprising um, that we haven't thought of, but something that we can, uh, that we'll decide would be a big improvement for Bridge Street Cemetery, so. Any other questions on this one? Are they requesting two readings on this or just no, one? No, not on this one. one. Just on the bond ones. That's it. So, all in favor in finance of a positive recommendation? Aye. 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 Any opposed? And then the last one upon the recommendation of the mayor, order that the sum of $162,500 is appropriated for the cost of a new six-wheel dump truck for the highway department. And to meet such appropriation, the treasurer, with the approval of the mayor, is authorized to borrow $162,500 under Mass Chamber Law Chapter 44, subsection 7-9, or pursuant to any other enabling authority and issue bonds or notes of the city, therefore, and that the mayor is authorized to take any other action necessary to the project further order that. The city treasurer is authorized to file an application with the appropriate officials of the Commonwealth to qualify under Chapter 44A of the general laws uh, any and all bonds of the city authorized by this council as of the date hereof and provided such information and execute such documents as such officials of the Commonwealth may provide. On the dump truck? Second? <coughs> Any questions on the dump truck? <coughs> yes? I was just going to say that um, this is one of several pieces of equipment that are recommended in the FY16 capital plan. So when you get the FY16 budget from the mayor, there'll be additional orders. So this is not the only piece of equipment we'll be purchasing. It just happens to be the only piece that we're actually going to bond for. The rest we're paying for out of various um, various funds in cash. And it's unfortunate. These things take a long time after you order them, don't they? Because I recall yes. sometimes it takes a year to get one of these trucks. Absolutely. Yep. So getting it done early is better. Right. Uh, any other questions in finance? Yeah. All in favor of a Aye. positive recommendation? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? And then the only other thing is um, the water sewer rates, which I think are going to get sent out by the council to committee prior to us dealing with that. So we're not going to take that up in, in finance. So that, I believe, covers it for us in finance. So uh, a motion to adjourn. Move to adjourn. adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. Thank you. Okay, and we are <clears throat> coming out of recess and back into our regular meeting. Um, and we'll start with, uh, uh, let's see, there's no reports of committees, but we do have two appointments uh, to be confirmed, and the mayor has arrived. <coughs> um, first up, an appointment of Christina Hodges to the Energy and Sustainability Commission. She comes with a positive recommendation. From the Committee on Rules, Orders, Appointments, and Ordinances, and I'll accept a motion for her. Move to uh, approve the appointment. Second. Uh, any discussion on the candidate? Mm -hmm. All those in favor of Christine Hodges to, uh, becoming appointed to the uh, Energy and Sustainability Commission, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Many abstentions. She's been waiting for this. She's been serving <laughs> as, as an auxiliary. Um, Next up, we have a reappointment, and this is of Trisha McGovern to the Conservation Commission. Um, Ms. Move McGovern. To refer. Second. You, that's a motion to refer? Yeah. Okay. To, then that's to refer to the Committee on Rules Orders. Appointments and Ordinances. Is there a second? Second. Uh, and I, uh, she lives at 53 Avis Circle. She'll serve, if she's approved, her term will start uh, this month and expire on June 2018. So all those in favor of referring, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any opposite? And, and any abstentions? None. Okay. And we move into financial orders in the first stop. And that is for, for the first reading, the resolution to adopt the capital improvement program, uh, FY2020, FY as submitted by Mayor Narkowitz on March 2nd, 2015. I'll accept the motion and put it on the floor. Move to make a motion put on the floor. Motion is made and seconded. Discussion on this. Um, the mayor has arrived. He's probably winded, but uh, and <laughs> just timed that out perfectly. Um, uh, and this was discussed in a finance committee meeting. Um, and the mayor had the packet, that's the thick packet that you see. Um, but the, for those of you who have questions about it, uh, 
he's here to answer them. Or uh, actually, uh, you want to give a pricey, Your Honor, and give just a thumbnail sketch? You, well, you, um, I, I, again, this is the five-year capital plan um, a program that we're required to submit in accordance with the charter. Um, and it essentially outlines um, the projects that uh, we um, uh, uh, foresee the need for over the next five years. All of our city departments uh, submitted requests. They were reviewed by the Capital Improvement Program Committee, which serves advisory to the mayor. Um, it includes your uh, colleague, uh, Councilor Murphy, who I believe serves as chair. Um, and, um, and so what you have before you is a, um, is a plan that, that lays out over the next five years, including where, um, where we anticipate the funding sources to come from, be it uh, cash capital, free cash, capital stabilization, um, re reprogrammed borrowings, um, et cetera. Um, it, it lays out uh, what you've got the actual um, project descriptions in the back, which detail um, all of the individual projects uh, what their uh, maintenance and ongoing, um, you know, ongoing uh, service will require. And um, so I'm just going to just summarize for you. If you look on, um, if you look at page eight of the program, it basically outlines the fact that uh, the total 2016 through 2020 capital improvement program projects total $22,161,290. Again, programmed over the next five fiscal years gives you a breakdown by each department and the number of projects. Um, as I highlighted at the public hearing, um, if you uh, go through uh, further back into the document, we break it down um, by each fiscal year. Uh, we actually break it down by each department, so you can sort of uh, uh, see what each department has over the span of that five years in terms of requests. and. Um, and again, this is a this is an, a living document because each year we're required to keep updating it. Uh, and again, what your vote tonight is a vote to essentially um, accept the fact that we've created this program. Um, it's not, in fact, uh, a, a vote to authorize any appropriation or any borrowing. That would actually happen during the budgetary process. Um, uh, it's available on the website if uh, residents want to go take a look at it. It's up uh, on the mayor's page under our financial section so people can uh, peruse through it and, and read about the various projects. Um, if people have questions about any of them, I can, I'm happy to highlight them. I, I know I did a much more extensive presentation um, at the hearing. You probably don't want me to do that again tonight. Um, so, uh, so I guess I'm open to questions that people may have or any, um, any other information that you require. Any comments or questions? Just, uh, just for uh, folks looking at the website, I just went to a quick look as we mentioned. And so if they go to their mayor's page, um, I look under. In alphabetical order on the left-hand side of the page. Yes. Capital Improvement Program should be there. As, oh, OK. As All one right, of thank the, you. Um, yeah. And so it I has uh, this capital, pro capital Improvement Program last year's iteration of it and that's where we'll sort of put them so people can okay, find So them. folks who want to see it can exactly. just follow those. Or, thank yeah. you. Or they could just type in capital improvement program on the search and it'll take them there as well from the home page yeah Thanks. and want to emphasize as the mayor said it's a fluid document this is a this is a five-year projection as to investments that need to be made there were a number of projects that didn't <laughs> make the cut in fact uh, you know as everyone presents their wish list there are a lot of those wishes are not met so mm -hmm. um, yeah the charter is, one of the obligations the charter gives us is we actually have to show a funding source for it so um, so while there are lots of projects we also have to be prudent in terms of what we think we anticipate we can spend on capital improvement over the next five years so and what our borrowing capacity is so that's why some of them don't make the don't actually make the program um, but they're still listed at the back of the document and those are sort of in a queue where we'll try to find a way to fund them over time uh, Councilor Carney so for example we just uh, approved the borrowing for the uh, the dump truck, the DPW. Out of finance. Yes, finance. So actually, yeah. the full council hasn't, so it's exactly. coming before us, but right. that, that's something that's required in order to show it, in order to be part of the capital improvement plan, it has to, sh it will have to show approved borrowing 
by this body? Um, we're actually, um, we're actually, th those are some projects that we are, that are on the capital improvement program, but they're ones that we want to, we want to get an earlier start on instead of waiting till July 1 because we want to take advantage of, um, of the interest rate environment that we have. So we're sort of taking those a little bit, uh, not out of sequence, but we're doing them a little bit earlier. And we, we, um, we typically do that as well with other, uh, particularly school projects that have to be done over the summertime. So we may bring forward orders related to those. Um, so they're kind of running on parallel tracks, uh, but those five projects are, are, are ones that are in the program that we want to get funded or get authorized so that we can go out to bond for. Oh, okay, related yeah. to the low interest mm -hmm. rates. Exactly, okay. yeah. Thank you. It's in anticipation of Janet Yellen's promised interest rate increase and the fact that this is such a long process that uh, in the months to come, they want to get in the hopper before those interest rates start to pop up. Council LaBarge. Yes. Mayor, I want to stress again and to Susan Wright and to the Capital Plan Committee, the excellent job of how this plan was set up. I find it much easier. I think it's very, very thorough and it explains exactly from every department what is needed, what the cost is, what year that that you know, um, plan will come forth. It's excellent, so thank you very much for this capital plan. Um, the only other thing I would note, um, and I noted this at the public hearing, is um, you will see a in a couple of um, instances uh, in the past, um, particularly the police department and the fire rescue department, um, we've traditionally uh, funded um, police uh, cruisers on the capital plan and we've also traditionally tried to fund ambulances on the capital plan or that's that's been how we've been forced to fund them um, you'll note on this capital program we're not actually including um, cruisers or ambulances on this capital program because what we're trying to do is actually incorporate the incorporate those into those departmental budgets um, because we view them as critical equipment that's essential to their work um, and not sort of a once in a uh, whatever sort of a piece of equipment we need to continuously uh, based on the mileage requirements be replacing that stock in a systematic way so um, so you'll note that the number of program uh, the number of projects for the police department is <coughs> has gone down but it's actually because we folded uh, the two cruisers that we would normally do on the capital program into the we're going to fold it into the FY16 budget as extraordinary uh, maintenance or other than ordinary Council Klein. I have a question about the sources of funding. So, for instance, in looking at the Department of Public Works, um, we see water enterprise, sewer enterprise, stormwater enterprise, and so forth. Are there um, some of these projects must be, I would imagine, funded by Chapter 90 funds? Is that um, reflected in yeah, no, separate? None of these are funded with Chapter 90 funds. Um, chapter 90 is strictly used for. Uh, highway construction, pro you know, for, for asphalt, <coughs> for, you know, for road reconstruction, and uh, we do use it for some engineering services, um, but we don't have any Chapter 90 monies programmed into the capital program. So things like street resurfacing and so forth? We don't yeah, the, the what you see in here for street resurfacing is the city's making a contribution above and beyond um, what, uh, what okay. the state is giving us in Chapter 90. Uh, chapter 90 is given um, directly from the Commonwealth, and that actually, I, I'm, auth I'm authorized to spend that directly under the Chapter 90 program. So that f those funds come directly, and we allocate it to paving projects. Um, so what we've done, though, is we, we have made a commitment, and that's a commitment that I'm, that I'm continuing actually accelerating, um, is a commitment to the city making a, an added contribution um, to paving, which we had not been able to do um, over the last several years. So last year, we added $500,000 into the capital improvement program. Initial, the plan last year had been to wait to skip a year and then try to increase it next year. Um, we're actually going to go ahead and just put another 500000 in this year's um, FY16 capital plan. So those expenditures are not reflected at all in this capital plan? Uh, they are not. Chapter 90. That's correct, yeah. 
And the, if we, if people want to track that kind of thing, where do they find that on the city's website? Uh, chapter 90 uh, does show up in our end of year report, I would assume, under grants. Um, it's going to show up in our audit. In our audit. It'll show up in our audited statements at the end of the fiscal year. Um, again, we get, a, we get a formula allotment that's, you know, it's set, by, uh, every city and town in Massachusetts gets a formula allotment. And so um, it's a fixed amount. And, uh, and we will actually will be announcing tomorrow, I'll be putting out an announcement announcing what our paving program is going to be for the upcoming construction year um, with, um, with a list of planned streets and crack ceiling and some of the other items that we'll be doing. Um, and that's basically all we believe we can do with the amount of money that we have available from Chapter 90 plus this 500000 So. It's more. It's 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 like a grant, um, and it basically comes directly to us, and we um, we sort of almost like sign invoices for it. Um, we we're given a certain amount of money when we hire Palmer Paving to do a section of Route Nine. We have a blue, almost like a requisition or reimbursement form that we have to fill out a project form, and then we submit that to the state, and they reimburse us for for that work. Um, and they verify whether it's a Chapter 90 eligible program. It has to be eligible under the, under the program. We also do use Chapter 90. Again, we have to go through that same reimbursement process um, for engineering of projects, for larger projects where we have to hire engineering to actually design it before we build it. And we do use some Chapter 90. The other thing we use some Chapter 90 for is we fund a portion of the city's traffic engineer uh, using, traf uh, using Chapter 90, which is an allowed use. And, um, and it's one of the ways we've been able to um, hire a full-time traffic engineer to work with the TPC as well as to help engineer a lot of these projects in-house so we don't have to spend more going, going out of house. So. Any other questions relative to the adoption of the capital improvement program? No? Roll call, please. Councilor Carney. Yes. Councilor Dwight. Yes. Councilor Klein. Yes. Councilor Labarge. Yes. Councilor Murphy. Yes. Councilor O'Donnell. Yes. Councilor Sheriff. Yes. Councilor Scott. Yes. That is approved in first reading. Um, next up. <clears throat> is the financial order to rescind borrowing of $264,200 from Land Off Sylvester Road. I'll accept the motion to put it on the floor. Move to approve. Second. Second. Okay. Um, Susan did speak to this in finance. You guys recall that way back then, about half an hour ago. <laughs> okay. Um, you want me to spare reading the order again? Just wait for the reading. Any other questions? The mayor is here. If you want to, and and Susan, I just wanted to um, ask for that uh, amendment that's required. We believe there's a Scrivener's error on the date in the order itself. Yeah, it was 15. Is it should say 2014. Um, your work since. Or it says on borrowing authority authorized under the loan appro order approved on May 15, 2015. You're saying yeah, it should be amended. It should be 20. Say 2014. Yeah. So there's a Scrivener's error. So we need to second. Okay. So and the 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 corrected date unless now May 15, unless you guys have mastered time travel, we we have many skills. That's not one of them. I did have a question. Uh, I just wondered whether you could just mention a little bit about this land self help grant. Sorry, but can we just vote on the motion for the amended? Do you have to actually? It's a Scribner's error. You have to actually do a separate. Yeah. Oh, so, okay. so all those in favor of the the motion to amend, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Now, now, Councilor Carney, take it away. Uh, Councilor Carney has a question. Yes. I just uh, wondered if you could um, yeah, so speak. With, the, thank um, you. Sorry, my stack is rolling away there. This is the um, this is one of a series of the um, land acquisition grants that uh, Mr. Fiden has come before you with, um, and this was a parcel. Um, that was out on Sylvester Road, which I know that the councilor is very familiar with. Um, and so this was a land acquisition. Uh, we, as, as is typical, we go out and um, in order to apply for the grant, we ask you to give us borrowing authority, uh, knowing full well that if we get the grant, we're going to rescind it. And because we're going out to bond, 
Um, our plan is to go out to bond. We want to rescind this order now. We got the grant, but we want to rescind the order because one of the things we'll be doing if you give us um, the approval on these orders to go out to bond, there's like a 20 day, 21 day window uh, where there's an appeal period. And then we'll actually be having a bond rating call uh, with um, one of the two rating agencies. Uh, and so, and they're going to look at all of our debt obligations. Um, and even though we don't intend to borrow this, because if we have this order still in effect, they'll count that against our overall debt obligation. So it's I in just our had a question about <coughs> oh. So I think what you're saying is that this land self-help act is a is a large is many of many of these projects fall into the same grant. Yes. yes. Okay. Yes. That was that was a there's the park grant and the land grants. Okay. The two types of grants and the land grants are the ones we tip we typically use for land acquisition including in your ward in the Fitzgerald yes. Lake mm -hmm. area. So it's all out of the same pot of money that exactly. was grant granted. And okay. as a requirement, they always ask us to. Uh, well, uh, yeah, I understand yeah, all that part. Do the whole, yeah. Sorry. Thank you. I no, that's understood. Okay. Any other questions on this? Nope. I'd just like to reinforce for viewers that um, we are rescinding this order for this two hundred sixty-four thousand dollars because I got two calls from Ward Seven residents with concern about. Uh, the borrowing of the money for this and so I just want it to be really clear to uh, the residents of Ward 7 in particular where so where this particular piece of land is that in fact we have a grant to make this purchase for it, it, that's, purposes. You're absolutely right. It's right. worth noting and it does cause a great deal of confusion. It's, it comes up again actually when we talk about the million six hundred and seven thousand for engineering for we, we are obliged it's kind of a tea ceremony. We are obliged to ask for the full amount and authorize the full amount in order to qualify to make to make the borrowing and the grant real. And um, once it's realized, then we have to rescind it because we no longer need to borrow it. We no, no longer pretend to act like we're going to borrow this money. <laughs> so it's, it's part of the tea ceremony that we do to conform with Mass General Law and on the DOR, I, I would assume. So, that is the case here. This is we asked for. Uh, we authorized this money before. Now we're going to rescind it because we knew full well in anticipation of the request that we were going to do just that, and 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 it does create a lot of confusion. And and thank you for for pointing that out. Um, okay, everyone's all set in first reading. Uh, roll call, please. Councilor White. Yes. Councilor Klein. Yes. Councilor Yes. Councilor Murphy? Yes. Councilor Murphy? Yes. Councilor Shira? Yes. Councilor Stackett? Yes. Councilor Carney? Yes. Suspend that, Rule 14. Uh, if the motion passes in first reading, there's been a request second. for suspension of rules that calls for a second reading uh, at the next meeting and to go to the second reading right now. So uh, any discussion on the suspension of rules? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Move oh. Second reading. Second reading's moved. Is there a second? Second. And a second. Uh, any further discussion on this? Roll call, please. Councilor Klein. Yes. Councilor Labarge. Yes. Councilor Murphy. Yes. Councilor O'Donnell. Yes. Councilor Sarah. Yes. Councilor Speck. Yes. Councilor Klein. Yes. Councilor Boyd. Yes. The order passes in second reading. Next up, we have financial order for $500,000 for FY16 street resurfacing that you just heard the mayor refer to. <coughs> Accept a motion to put it on the floor. So moved. Second. second. Motion is made and seconded. Uh, any further questions relative to this? Uh, the mayor has indicated that this is spending above and beyond uh, Chapter 90 allocations uh, for the resurfacing of streets. I don't know why. It doesn't seem to be a problem. I don't hear any complaints about the streets, but whatever. So, <laughs> um, any further discussion on this? Roll call, please. Yes. 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 Passes in first reading. Second. There's been a motion made to suspend rules and seconded for uh, suspend rules to allow for a second reading tonight. Any discussion on the suspension of rules? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? All right, I'll accept a motion. Second. Second. Second reading 
has been made. The motion has been made and seconded. So any further discussion <coughs> on the $500,000 for FY16 street resurfacing? Hearing none, roll call, please. Councilor Murphy. Yes. Councilor O'Donnell? Yes. Councilor Yes. Yes. Councilor Yes. Yes. Now we have the financial order for $1,607,125 for engineering and construction related to the stabilization of the river road retaining wall slope. Um, I'll accept the motion. So moved. Second. Motions have made and seconded. Um, do you, now you recall Susan Wright had represented that this was, uh, again, essentially roughly our commitments less than four hundred thousand dollars on this not the million that we're stating but mm -hmm. that whole tea ceremony I just described is, is a, a play here um, do you have any further questions the mayor is here if you want to ask the mayor any questions relative to this no okay roll call please yes 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 Yes. Yes. That's passed in first reading. Is there a motion to suspend rules? Motion to suspend rules. Yes. Second. Oh, Motions are made and seconded to suspend okay. rules to allow for a second reading tonight. Any discussion on the suspension of rules? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? I'll accept the motion. So moved. Second, second reading is uh, moved second. and seconded. Uh, any further discussion? Roll call, please. Councilor Sharon? Yes. Councilor Sprecher? Yes. Councilor Carney? Yes. Councilor Dwight? Yes. Councilor Sharon? Yes. Councilor Kwame? Yes. Yes. Councilor Murphy? Yes. Councilor O'Donnell? Yes. That passes in second reading as well. Um, financial order for $377,000 of repairs and improvements to the Connecticut River levy. Accept the motion. <coughs> second. Motion's made and seconded. Um, Further discussion on this? Any questions? Roll call, please. Yes. Carney? Yes. 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 I'll accept the motion. Suspend, suspend rule 14. Second. second. Motion made and second to suspend rules. Uh, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Uh, any opposed or abstentions? Okay. That, so I'll accept a motion for the second reading. To approve. Second. Okay. Motions are made and seconded. Uh, this, yes. The only thing I would note just about this particular order, um, I'm not sure if it came up in finance, but this is an order that will be um, actually financed by the Stormwater Enterprise Fund that was created um, in case that wasn't clear from the order. But just oh, and, and, and thank you for pointing that out. That's, um, yes. Yeah. For residents who may be interested, this is one of the big, large-scale projects that uh, that the Stormwater um, Enterprise Fund was created to be able to help us uh, take care of with and, regard and to maintaining the dams and levees. And this is MEMA and FEMA. Uh, this is part of the part of the regulatory requirements right. that we have to to make sure that the dam and the levee systems do, are not uh, compromised by um, by trees and vegetation and things like that. And I know Councilor O'Donnell held a ward meeting about this project and. Met with residents about it. Right. Yeah. Uh, the DPW presented some of the plans um, that they developed um, to comply with what the Army Corps of Engineers and others are requiring of us. And um, there's a lot of community interest in that vegetation removal. It has to do with the beautiful yew trees there, um, but it's something that's w required. So it's, there's been a lot of community discussion about this, as well as engineering discussion, I guess you could say. <laughs> well, I envy you that. <laughs> but yet the root systems compromise the integrity of a levy, and the levy, when that's compromised, compromises the integrity of the community. So, so. Just as a point of information, the order is not on the website. The link is dead. The link for the levy repair? Um, I'm not able to I can access click it. To it. I got it. Our agenda. That's where I'm doing it. Do you want me to read it? Now it worked. I did it twice and it didn't work. Well, the, the time it did. Wi-Fi is a little hinky. No, no. Sorry. Wi-Fi is a little okay. hinky. So, okay. All right. Sorry. You. <laughs> okay. 
And and for those of you playing at home, um, you can actually access that same document if you go to, if you download the agenda for tonight, you'll see a hyperlink uh, for a PDF of that document here, so that you can click on that and go directly to it. All right. I think. Um, any other questions or discussion points? Okay. Uh, roll call, please. Councilor Carney. Yes. Councilor Dwight. Yes. Councilor Klein. Yes. Councilor Lombardi. Yes. Councilor Murphy. Yes. Councilor Yes. 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 That passes in second reading. Now we have the financial order for the seven hundred thousand dollars for the conversion to LED light street lights. I'll accept the motion. Move approval. Motion's made. Approved. Motion's made and seconded. Um, uh, further discussion? Um, I would like to say that, that actually this has been a project that's been ongoing in discussion in, in, in energy and sustainability. For, well, now this is in our second term on this discussion. Actually, I know they discussed it. This has been about six, seven years. A number of communities surrounding us actually already have LED. Mm -hmm. We're able to, who are associated with WAMICO, we're able to put in LED um, systems. We finally have national grid. Um, towing the line, and we have uh, now been able to make the case. And as Councilor Murphy said, the ornamental lights, which the city control down the Armory Street lot, have been LEDs for years. Um, they're they're actually cooler LEDs than you're going to see on the street lights. But uh, for folks who have been lying in their beds, seeing this bright orange light blasting into their house, and with some annoyance will find that that will no longer be the case, and there will be a considerable savings realized. Um, okay, so the motion's been made and seconded. Uh, roll call, please, on this. Councilor Dwight. Yes. Councilor Klein. Yes. 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 Suspend rule 14. Second. Motions and made and seconded. Suspend rules. Any discussion on the suspension of rules? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Second reading. Second reading is made. Motions made. Second. It's been seconded. Uh, any further discussion? Roll call, please. Councilor Klein. Yes. Councilor Lobarge. Yes. Councilor Murphy. Yes. 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 Now we come to the financial order for, of $162,500 for the cost of a new dump truck for the DPW. Move approval. Second. Motions are made in second. <coughs> that was Councilor Carney and Councilor uh, LaBarge making the motion. Um, further discussion? Um, I think, was there a question directed at Susan on this point that, that she felt, oh no, it wasn't this order, it was the, Perpetual care. That's right. We'll yeah. get to that. Okay. Um, no further discussion. Okay. Roll call, please. Yes. 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 I'll accept a motion for suspension of rules. Second. Any discussion on the suspension of rules? All those in favor, please aye. say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Okay, I'll accept a motion for the Move second reading. Second reading. Second. Motion's made and seconded. Uh, any further discussion? Roll call, please. Councilor Murphy. Yes. Councilor O'Donnell. Yes. Councilor Yes. Councilor Yes. Yes. Councilor Yes. Councilor Yes. Passes in second reading. Now, this is where we run into some of the questions that the mayor might be able to answer. This is a financial order. For the appropriation of twenty thousand five hundred dollars from the cemetery perpetual care fund to uh, fund a conversion uh, conservation plan for uh, the Bridge Street Cemetery, I'll accept the motion. Put it on the floor. Move to approve. Second. Okay. And Your Honor, uh, Councilor Klein had a question about this. Well, so the, this council approved that CPC project. Um, so that project was submitted, um, and it was a case where the project had been submitted. Um, and the CPC didn't have enough money in the round, and so they scaled back the funding for the project. Um, and so uh, the uh, DPW approached me about it, and we discussed the possibility of using some of these perpetual care funds, which are for use 
in the cemetery and for cemetery projects and maintenance. And so we, um, we agreed to try to help fund the rest of the project. And I know the application is online, so I can send you the link for that. Um, the, I mean, the completed project application that the CPC has um, is all cataloged online from, I think it was the last round, uh, not the current round, but the last round. So I can, we can get you that link so you can reread the project. Um, but again, it's a project that you, this council already approved the initial 16,000 for um, that we're now trying to match so that we can get the project completed. But um, we actually, I know that the, the folks in Parks and Cemetery feel that it's a worthwhile project, not only because of the historical nature of it, but because it's also going to help them with um, needed repairs and maintenance and, and, and issues around some of the tombstones that uh, need to be preserved in the future. So it's a fascinating cemetery with a rich history. And so it's, uh, I know that the project was well received. I know the Historical Commission supported it. I know the Ward 3 Neighborhood Association supported it. The CPC just didn't have the money in that round. So, um, so I really I, I can't speak to the specifics of the project um, or a lot of specifics to it, but I can get you the actual application. Um, and then you can sort of see what the full project was uh, entailed. Are there any other questions relative to this? Okay. Roll call, please. Councilor Obama. Yes. Councilor Sheriff. Yes. Councilor Yes. 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 This does. There is no request for uh, suspension rules on that one. So that passes in first reading, and we'll come up for second reading on um, the 16th. Next up, this is for referral, and I should emphasize this is for referral. It is. We are not deciding this tonight. This is the water and sewer rates to be in effect for fiscal year 2016, and, and the referral is to the Public Works Committee of the City Council. And I also like to preface this with the fact that this is, will be the first time that the Council sets the rates in these cases, which is why um, we, we've seen, in some level, we've seen a demonstrable amount of uh, response from the community. And this is why, actually, it made sense that many of us argued that um, there has to be a political accountability. There has to be uh, people who are elected to office to, to be held to account, us in this case, for sending these fees and rates so that um, we are susceptible to um, our constituents' votes and constituents' influence as they make their cases here. So uh, I'm actually kind of excited by this on some level. Uh, I understand that it has created some consternation. It, has, it, uh, it was published in the paper to, uh, yesterday or today. I'm not sure what it was yet. And um, there, a lot of people have reacted to that. And that's good on one hand. I understand their concerns. But it, it, I think it's good in that we now, the public is, has an opportunity for engagement in this decision. So. Uh, the, we are asking to refer this to the Public Works Committee so that Councilor Specter can hold that meeting he just promised uh, earlier on in the one minute announcement. So there we go. Okay. <coughs> motion? So, second. Okay. And then Councilor Specter. May, must may I put in a plug for that meeting once again? Please. So the meeting will be next Thursday, that is April 9th at 5 o'clock. It will be in the hearing room. It's, in uh, the hearing room, you said here before. Class. No, the other one, the forum. Oh, I'm sorry, you're, the right. you're here. right. The you're hearing right. room is the other one. Could, could you just again? Yes, there April is 9th. April 9th. No, Thursday. there's some confusion of just dis distinguish between the bags yes. and yes. here okay. because it, people could be confused about that. There are two meetings next week. Thank you. One of them is on Tuesday, April 7th, which is not what this is about. And that meeting is about the single use plastic bag ban. That, or, that ordinance, which will cover that, is moving forward and will come to the Council later in the month. That is a public forum that is Tuesday, April 7th, 5 o'clock, will be here in Council Chambers. A second meeting, which is a committee meeting, but we really hope the public will come because this is a time, as Council Dwight, Dwight said, which addresses this referral, which is on water rates for the upcoming year. And that meeting will be held on Thursday, April 9th, in the hearing room, okay, 
And um, <laughs> a, a, another Five distinction PM. worth making that I've heard frequently confused: this is not stormwater it's or not flood storm. control. That's a different rate and fee system. This is for water, the water that comes out of your tap and the sewer, the water that <laughs> once processed goes out of your house. And these are the rates that, that you have been paying and previously the fees were set by the Board of Public Works. Councilor Labarge. Yes, um, Councilor Spector, how long is this meeting? Five o'clock to when? I think we're, uh, it's, uh, I think it's scheduled going from five to seven. Um, if we needed to go longer, we okay, could great. vote in to extend that meeting if we need to. We, we will make sure we have all questions answered, and as, if that'll be a meeting where people can get up and speak. We'll have public uh, comment, and um, so we'll go as long as we need to. Yeah, because I know some of the calls I told them about the hearing already, and I told them the time, and they said, well, we just get out of work. I said, no, I'm pretty sure it's going to go longer, so when you come in, you could speak. Okay. Thank you. <coughs> should also note that um, the mayor can't set the budget until we approve these rates and so there and uh, as I said this is the first year we're doing this um, I believe next year when when this time rolls around we will have in place a public hearing established and other protocols right now um, this is a public meeting the difference actually won't mean much to folks who are coming to speak you still get to speak regardless one there there are different classifications but and we may have to convene depending on how the timeline shakes out uh, a special council meeting in order to meet the deadline too uh, just because we often use the term hearing in many different ways there's the official <coughs> meaning of the word hearing that we often use in planning board and and even for the city council so um, in terms of communicating to residents who have already uh, voiced real concern about the hiking of water and sewer rates, um, I, I want to be able to clarify that the meeting that is on Thursday is not really a hearing and it's not really a forum. So if, is there a way to characterize this meeting to residents so that they can better understand to what extent they can voice their concerns whether there will be a dialogue or how this mm -hmm. will actually yes that'd be well, helpful as with many committees you can the committee itself can set up the kind of rules that we we have for that this will be an informal meeting in the sense that we will invite dialogue we'll invite questions we will allow comments it will not be run like the city council where you get up and you only have three minutes so this will be more an open meeting that we really invite that interchange for for any and all questions or comments thank you um, will there be representatives from the Department of Public Works there for, for that level of expertise? There, Councilor, as will there, there will be DPW representation. Okay, thank you. Yeah. So it will walk and quack like a duck, It will, but it will not be a hearing. <laughs> walk and quack like a hearing, but it will not be a hearing. Point in fact, actually, the, the purpose of this is that so that the committee, the Public Works com Committee can make a recommendation to us ultimately. And that also, there will be a public, at the next council meeting, there will be an opportunity for the public to speak as well, but only in the, won't be a hearing, only in the public comment, but they also have the opportunity to contact this by email or phone or letter. So, um, so I think this addresses uh, Councilor Carney's concern that there will be more interaction than people can have when they come to the council meeting right. at this, at there this the committee opportunity meeting. to ask questions and have the questions answered. Yes. So, Council Labarge. Okay, so what I'm hearing now at this, it's an informal hearing. It's not meeting. a hearing, it's a committee meeting. It's a committee meeting with the Board of Public Works. No, with, okay. no, with the Public Works okay. Committee, which is the Council with the Committee. Public Works Committee, okay, which is part of their new commission, correct? No, it's part of your the, the Public Works Committee is uh, Councilor Spector, Councilor Klein, and Councilor Adams, and they will be convening this meeting with members of the DPW present with the mayor for people to discuss questions um, and find out more and, and to express their concerns or hopes um, about, about the fee adjustment. So, yeah, the beep, there is no BPW anymore, and there's... Uh, 
um, and the advisory committee will not be in play here. I thought it was the Board of Public Works Commission. Isn't that what it's called now? Or what so is that? we do have a Public Works Commission that is advisory to the DPW. And so the DPW um, works with the Public Works Commission on these kinds of issues, but then ultimately they make a recommendation to me about what they believe the rates are, and then I, um, based on my judgment about that, those rates uh, go back. We've gone back and forth. We've had meetings, and and now I'm recommending to the city council what I believe the water and sewer rates should be for FY16, and so it's the council's process from there um, to vote to vote on them. Um, because that's what I had talked with Councilor Spector about the. Mm -hmm. Department of Public Works Commission, were they going to be involved also because they're part of you working with them. They give you what, yeah, they, they're, what they are recommending themselves to you. You then recommend it to City Council. Yeah, the, but the Public Works um, Commission doesn't, do, doesn't make that recommendation to me. No, but they, how do you get it? Uh, from DPW staff, from the director, okay. from the water superintendent, from the wastewater treatment superintendent, from the professional staff. They have vetted it with the Public Works Commission okay. um, in an advisory, but the Public Works Commission, unlike the DPW, which used to vote on the rates and set the rates, this that the, the process is different. The process is actually more now like other cities, which is the mayor and city council set the rates. Um, so there's been these are still recommendations. Thank you. Yep. Uh, Councilor Klein. Um, I just want to note that because this isn't an official public hearing and it is a committee meeting and we're not going through the same kind of announcement process that a public hearing would uh, demand, that it just kind of behooves us as counselors to really get the word out to our constituents and let resident Northampton residents know that this meeting is happening so that exactly. we can have as many people as possible come yeah. and express their yeah. thoughts about the proposed hike. Yeah. If individual counselors can do that, the representatives of the newspaper That's important. here, we can make sure there's an article on that. Any way we can get the word out, I totally agree that people know this meeting is happening. I suspect that the paper might pick this up. <laughs> <laughs> I got a, I has my spidey sense. But, um, <coughs> And I just want to also assure the counselors I'm preparing some historical information for you, which I'll be sending out, which will give you, as we do with our other budget numbers, a 10-year span of what the rates have been over the last 10 years and how they've increased over time and how this increase relates to other historical increases. So you'll have that. It is worth noting that previously the way most citizens found out about any rate increase was when they got the bill because, uh, by and large, Essentially, the rates were the rates were approved by the BPW. Now, the fact that they do there is a heightened awareness. Um, so, the historical documents for reference are going to be quite helpful if we can put it into context how the rates have increased, what influences the rate increase, why the and what justifications are for. Them. So, all that in this fantastic meeting that Councilor Specter will be presiding over. And then, uh, <laughs> And then, and then the subsequent council meetings. Uh, and as I said, we may have a dedicated council meeting for this one issue. So, yeah. so Council LaBarge. Yes. How many people can you actually accommodate in the hearing room? Uh, a hundred. Yeah. Quite a few. Is it? Yeah. So we'd be all set. We yeah. set it up for a free space there. I think we can we can accommodate quite a, quite a number of people. Right now, I'm experiencing the longest debate we've had on a referral ever. But uh, I agree. <laughs> anyone? Are we are we all set on this referral? Yes. All those in favor of referring the water and sewer rates uh, to the Public Works Committee of the City Council, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? And any abstentions? Okay. Now we're into orders. <clears throat> oh look. <laughs> Oh, yes, I'm sorry. It, why don't we, yeah, um, we deferred the mayor's um, opportunity to uh, present his proclamations and whatnot uh, until he got here after his, the August ceremony that he was present at, well, his daughter received an honor. Thank so. you. And, and, and thank you.
thank you for um, allowing me to do this out of order. I just uh, I know you have other ordinances that you'll be working on tonight. So um, this is a proclamation that I'm issuing um, for April 7th, uh, 2015, um, which is this coming Tuesday. It's called Mayor's Day of Recognition for National Service. Whereas service to others is a hallmark of the American character and central to how we meet our challenges, and whereas AmeriCorps and Senior Corps participants address the most pressing challenges facing our cities and counties, from educating students for the jobs of the 21st century and supporting veterans and military families, to providing health services and helping communities recover from natural disasters, and whereas national service expands economic opportunity by creating more sustainable, resilient communities and providing education, career skills, and leadership abilities for those who serve, and whereas there are more than 1,000 participants in the Corporation for National Service programs in Northampton, bolstering the civic, neighborhood, <coughs> and faith-based organizations that are so vital to our economic and social well-being, and whereas national service participants demonstrate commitment, dedication, and patriotism by making an intensive commitment to service, a commitment that remains with them in their future endeavors. And whereas the Corporation for National and Community Service shares a priority with mayors nationwide to engage citizens, improve lives, and strengthen communities, and is joining with the National League of Cities, City of Service, and mayors across the country to recognize the impact of service on the Mayor's Day of Recognition for National Service on April 7, 2015. And now, therefore, I, Mayor David J. Narkowitz, do hereby proclaim April 7, 2015 as National Service Recognition Day in the City of Northampton and encourage residents to recognize positive impact of national service in our city, to thank those who serve, and to find ways to give back to their communities. In witness whereof, I have set my hand and affixed the seal of the city of Northampton. Thank you very much for the opportunity to present this. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Back to the agenda. Um, so next up is 15.355 and 15.356 ordinances pertaining to snow removal from city sidewalks. It comes with a positive recommendation from the Committee on Rules, Orders, Appointments, and Ordinances amended. And then as amended in City Council on March 5th, 2015, this will be the second reading. I'll accept the motion for the floor. So moved. So moved. Second. second. <coughs> the reason this was deferred, actually, uh, Councilor Carney, you weren't able to be here, and you had, you had expressed the, um, some concerns relative to the discussion, and we thought that it would be appropriate to, given the fact that we were counting the fact there wouldn't be another snowstorm, and by God, we were right. Um, in the, in the intervening time that um, it was where <laughs> but it's it was worth having a full discussion about that and in and, and wait so that's why we're why this is why you may have thought you dodged this bullet it's <laughs> it's back to haunt um, are there, is there any discussion on this any there was some discussion we did get some feedback there was some um, some discussion potential amendments so if anyone's interested in offering an amendment, I do think now is probably the time. Well, I'm not uh, prepared to offer an amendment right now, but um, the points that I raised uh, two meetings ago when this first came up are, are pretty much the same, and which, which are that um, the requirement that the snow be removed along the full width of the sidewalk is one that um, I do believe is important. I believe that requirement is important. However, I, I say that with the knowledge that um, not only the vast majority, but well over 95% of the residents of the city of Northampton do not adhere to that regulation presently. And so um, I, I'm concerned that we're uh, now even though, even though there has always been uh, an opportunity for um, people to receive a, uh, a fine based on, on um, the regulation being in effect, and I, I believe it was the building commissioner who was um, at that point the person who would uh, levy the fine. Uh, the police department. So it was the police department. Okay, so that it, uh, I'm, I'm just concerned that what we're doing is we're um, 
<coughs> we're focusing on the f we're focusing on the fine and on who can hand out the fine while we know that um, these you know this this in and of itself is not is not a measure that will um, tend I, I don't believe it's a measure that will result in better compliance with the regulation just because I, I believe for many people those that have spoken to me certainly m many seniors um, are not able to clear their sidewalk to the full width um, in within 24 hours and so and even though there are some people who physically are not able I agree that there are some who just flagrantly do not comply with the law and so it's it, I, I just say it because I, I I consider it to be a bit of a quandary it's no it's a very complicated matter I guess is my my point it's very complicated um, Council Member. well I'm, I really agree with this um, I personally live in an area where there's a lot of foot traffic where there's a hospital and two high schools and there's a lot of people moving around I think it's important to do uh, but I am concerned particularly about two populations in the city um, we certify every year that there's over a hundred seniors that own real estate that live on less than twenty six thousand dollars a year and and that's certified by the assessors it's a hardship for them and I did speak to the Council on Aging and and say listen we have to go with this for the mobility issue but we'd appreciate it if you would try and come up with a program where seniors you know that are a very low income get some assistance from you in getting their sidewalks clear because it could cost a thousand dollars you know this year could well have costed somebody a thousand dollars to get their sidewalk cleared and their driveways cleared depending on where they lived uh, we also have 35 100 percent disabled veterans in the city of Northampton for whom it's also a hardship and I know I spoke with the veterans agent about that and he was going to check with soldier on many of those people have community service work to do right. and that they would be able to go out and help their fellow 100% disabled vets by helping them. so I don't disagree that we need this ordinance but there are a couple of populations that I think we should have our city departments try and find a way to mitigate the impact on them either because they're seniors on very limited income or they're 100 percent disabled people Councilor Barge yes um, I have to say that talking with Pat Shaughnessy in regards to your concerns and she does have a and always had ever since we've had this ordinance in place a telephone number of people who she does have that could be available from for helping out to do the mowing and so forth I mean the snow blowing but the main concern is that I had talked with Patty just recently on this is yes on soldiers on doing community services and also the jail I think it's, it's a good community service to do if you look at the ordinance itself and explaining about seniors and disabled exempt you know disabled exemptions I think something should be done with that but I also think that many many people with disabilities are going to have a difficult time themselves even trying to clear that at a full width and I'm talking about really being disabled they can't do it Councilor Donald um, the other side of, of that, of course, is I remember a letter in the Gazette, I think it must have been this year, about um, a disabled person who wants to use the sidewalks and actually travel them. So we should be concerned with removing the snow for their benefit as well and their own mobility and making sure curb cuts are, are cleared um, and so forth. I, um, I like to draw your attention to my little book report that I <laughs> <coughs> they're linked uh, they're linked as uh, as his book report is linked to the uh, it's linked to the fine yep uh, ordinance um, oh. and, and let me just speak to it briefly um, I, I got a lot of constituent inquiries and complaints <coughs> and concerns when we first took this up and a lot of it I think was frankly <coughs> sticker shock about the fine amount I think a lot of residents saw and they, they assumed that the next snowstorm, the uh, DPW or the police department or parking enforcement would be out there ticketing everybody and pretty soon you would be receiving a $250 ticket. Um, that, of course, is not 
the case as a, as a practical matter. Um, it's not going to, you know, people aren't going, you're not going to have a street, and as soon as the 24-hour period ends, the street uh, will not be littered with, with tickets from the enforcing officers. Um, but there is that concern out there, and I wanted to address it, and I wanted to address it by actually looking at real data from other communities as opposed to us just reacting in a panicked kind of way, perhaps, and lowering the fines. We want a fine that's appropriate, but we also don't want a fine that's, that's you know, beyond which it, it makes no <coughs> difference. We don't want a fine that's too high. So I looked at about 30 cities in the Commonwealth, and there's a little chart. Um, you know, the fine that is proposed in this ordinance would be um, probably the, the highest on, on the third violation among these 30 cities. That's something to, to, for us to take into account today as we think about possibly amending this ordinance. What you can't tell from all these cities is how effective each of these ordinances are. I mean, I can't tell you whether Amesbury's $5 fine is more effective than Somerville's um, $200 fine on, on the third violation. I can't tell that. I agree with Councillor Carney that in reality, the way to make um, our sidewalks clearer, clear uh, is through enforcement. And that's something that I don't think we can do with an ordinance. We can provide more options for enforcement. And actually, I think that's one of the best parts of what the mayor has proposed. Um, but I, I, I would like to call that to your attention generally. I'm not prepared to make an, an, a motion for an amendment right now. But I would like that to be considered. And I'll also just finally say, on another page of the book report, <laughs> um, uh, I looked at some of the other variations in the ordinances across the Commonwealth. You do see variations in the amount of width that's required to be cleared. Some have a 48-inch width, some have three feet, and there's some variation with, in that regard. The city of Cambridge also has a senior and disabled person exemption program. Um, essentially, I think it's aligned with the CPA exemption, and if you qualify, you know, the city will arrange for your sidewalk to be, to be cleared for you. Um, in looking at that, I'm, you know, uh, and discussing with, with some, some people, I'm not sure that, that we have the means to do that in Northampton, quite, quite frankly. So I didn't bring a full proposal for that. But it is something that exists elsewhere, um, and it's something that we <coughs> think about in this discussion. Any thoughts on that? The absence of an amendment will be voting on what exists currently. <clears throat> I mean, I think, you know, this came up in our first debate was, in fact, and as um, Councilor O'Donnell has, has presented proof that virtually every community, every municipal community that has sidewalks has regulations of some sort requiring snow removal for the reasons that we've all stated. First of all, it's and part of the impetus for this original modification in these rules came from business leaders in, in response to the fact that downtown, a really critical place where pedestrian traffic um, um, is, is most concentrated, and the same thing with general business in um, Florence. But they, there were concerns that um, through some of the, this rather extraordinary winter we've had that, that there were streets that were not clear, there were sidewalks that were not cleared. And more importantly, there were curb cuts that weren't cleared. People would abide by the what they thought the letter of the law was, is clear the sidewalk in front of them, and then no one took responsibility for the curb cuts, which basically trapped anyone in a wheelchair or a child with a stroller or anyone who wasn't able to leap over a snowbank to get across the street. Um, and as Councilor Carney pointed out, and as I've had discussions with a number of people who called me upset about this. I said, there, these laws have been on, we've had these laws on the books for quite some time. Um, and in fact, actually, the citation was a criminal citation. So that's, to reiterate, this is to change that from a criminal citation to a civil uh, fine, which means you don't have to go to court to address it or to appeal it. Um, we aren't requiring the police to have to go to court to make their case for the, the citation. It reduces that pressure it gives there's a wide amount of latitude of discretion by the enforcing officers it would probably mostly be complaint driven as opposed to um, 
patrolling, people patrolling and literally trying to find someone who's in violation, it would take someone to say, I can't get across such and such street or I can't walk past such and such sidewalk. Um, one of the concerns, one of the suggestions was, and I think Councillor O'Donnell brought this up, was possibly, and, or Councillor Carney mentioned this, was to start at the starting point would be a warning and then, then a fine if the warning's not abided by. Because at the point, and, I, and actually I, the more I thought about that, the more it made some sense because yes. if, if you provide a warning, then you have an opportunity to find out if there's a, if there's a viable reason for the sidewalk not being cleared. Giving someone an opportunity to say, I'm sorry, I'm infirm, I can't do this, I don't have the ability to, in which case it wouldn't qualify for a fine. And then we could work to try and see what we, because the objective is to clear the sidewalk, not to punish somebody. Um, I, uh, I, and actually this is one thing that I've never been particularly sure of with, under the new rules, if I can even offer an amendment in my position as, as, as uh, presiding officer. But I would float that as a possibility. Start with a warning, then you can yes. escalate up the, up the ladder for the, the, the uh, multiple violations. The other issue that one of the constituents raised with me was a property owner who said, <clears throat> the warnings usually go to the tenants, and not in all, in, in in many cases in this community, not all the uh, tenants have a very good clear line of communication with the property owner. Uh, one property owner said, "I got cited once and never knew it because my tenants never told me, and then I was then I was told I was in violation of not paying a fine because I, the, a fine that I wasn't even aware of." Um, so, but we don't have a registry similar to the town of Amherst, which requires all property, commercial or rental property owners to register, although that might be something worth considering separate from this ordinance. I don't think mm -hmm. that's a terrible idea. Um, but at least that way you have, you don't, you're not responding to some incorporated entity that someone made up their name when they, when they purchased the, the property, you have a direct line of contact with someone who manages that property. Uh, Council Murphy. Well, we, we do in fact know who owns the properties because we send them tax bills. So we know who they are. It's not a question of knowing who they are. It's just a question of if whoever's enforcing it sends that to them or hands it to whoever happens to open the door who may or may not be responsible for the process of moving well we send we send the tax bills to in some cases uh, a trust in some mm -hmm. cases mm -hmm. um, it would be nice to have a person with an email address and a, who answers the phone at the other end or something that um, so that we can have confirmation of actually receipt of of the citation or the warning Councilor Shara Right, because if we're mailing this to the owner, then you're, you're you're looking at two, three, four days down the line, and then, till, then they could be in violation again. If right. It, yeah. That time. So, so uh, Your Honor, you look like you want to speak to this. It's, no. Okay. <laughs> Council Murphy. Well, versus sticking it in the door, because chances are, if it's somebody who's working, when the enforcement person goes by, they're not going to hand it to a live body either. They're going to put it in a, stick it in a door. Yeah. And then what, who knows what happens to it either. At least if you mail it to the owner, you know it gets to the owner. Council O'Donnell. I'd like to return to the point that the, I, I think the intention of the ordinance is not to fine people. So there's only so much progress we're going to make by, by discussing the mechanism of the fine. It's about changing the culture. And if you own property in the city and you rent out to people um, and you've done it for more than one year, you, you, should, you should realize that this is something that every year it might snow and you should be prepared so um counselor carney um if if it if the timing is okay right now i know that you entertained a, an amendment that would call the first for uh, you want to grab onto the okay. yeah. well i'm i'm going to grab onto that and just put that out there as uh, although um I think Councilor Spector reminded me that he thought that he put that forward at the last meeting. Yes. Whether that yes. happened or yes. not, yes. there's yes. no reason that it and can't. I withdrew it. Okay. Um, I think it might be appropriate to allow for an initial warning followed by the series of, of fines that were um, offered as another amendment. Keeping so I don't know if we could make that, if, if I could just make a friendly 
you know, a friendly amendment to the proposed amendment, mm -hmm. or whether well. I'll just make I'll just make the full amendment, which is that there be an initial offering of a warning prior to the uh, uh, levying of fines okay. for violations. Well, there is no other amendment standing out. Well, so then I'll just offer that as a standalone, and then others can follow. Is there a second? I on? second. Second. It. Yep. Okay, Councilor Murphy, to the amendment. Um, I think the public's going to think that for every offense, first, second, or third, they're entitled to a warning. Is that your intent? No, my intention is that there would be prior to the first offense, for prior to a first fine, the first offense would be a warning. The second offense would be the fines that were laid out. So we just bump the mm -hmm. numbering so that there'd actually be a, a, a series of four numbers beginning with an initial warning then a first fine, second fi second violation fine, and third violation fine, spelled out that way in the ordinance so that people were clear that they get one warning. So, and that's one warning a winter, correct? Because once you get to the, yeah. you know, high, yeah. highly <laughs> expensive level, I know warning we had was discussion the, about yeah. that, and, and, yeah. and I, I've kind of been convinced that Really, the season, it makes more sense because it, the warning should really be enough to um, warn someone that that is the requirement for the rest of the winter season rather than needing to be warned again the next snowstorm. Uh, Your Honor, you have something you want to add to this? It's I'll, I'll wait till the motion's seconded, if there's a motion. Yeah. I, oh, the motion's been seconded. Yeah. It, it, the amendment's been seconded, so we're debating the amendment. I think I spoke to this last time when Councilor Spector raised it. I guess my only concern is that the current <coughs> practice now has been to issue warnings. I mean, that has been the longstanding practice. Mm -hmm. In fact, the police department has a bright yellow card that spells out the ordinance, and right. they typically do a warning. Mm -hmm. uh, my concern is that if you embed it in the ordinance, I'm not sure how they'll I'm not sure how they'll track a warning. You know, we have systems that are set up that if you issue a citation, it gets recorded. I don't know how we'll record a, a warning in, um, into the system. So um, it, I would actually, and I would also recommend, because I, I feel like um, we're, s we're sort of getting so far away from the intent of the ordinance, which we, I think is to try to make sure that we educate people and that they, um, that they shovel their sidewalks. I mean, I would, I would, even request that you just retain the current ordinance of fifty dollars and let's call it a day because we're going into lots of different permutations and first warnings and second warnings and it seems like it's getting people concerned um i i just think that people are uh, so i i'd rather just keep it simple um because if you now add that there's going to be a verbal warning or a written warning um that just creates another layer which i think will be difficult for us to manage because we don't currently have a written warning system that we manage right now. What we do have is we have discretion, and any enforcement agency has discretion, whether it's the building commissioner, whether it's whoever. Um, and I like to think that our staff works really hard with people to use that discretion reasonably, and, and so I'd prefer, th I'd prefer that, I'd, pref I'd prefer just having a, a $50 fine to we're going to have a warning, then we're going to have a $50 fine, then we're going to, and, and, and just making it too complicated. Uh, having, having made the motion, I agree with the mayor. I actually would prefer a keeping it as is with just the $50 fine with the discretion of the warning, although I didn't feel as though the proposed um, uh, ordinance really allowed for that uh, as it was written. I do, uh, so I'm going back and forth here. I also think that it's, it, I don't, think that it would be difficult in the same way that we track moving violations with uh, being in receipt of a warning. Um, in fact, you know, people can receive two or three warnings and that information is readily available. I know we're not the state police and we don't necessarily have those same capacity, but I think that um, putting in, in, as opposed to the monetary amount of a fine, you can put in the warning. That being said, I do. I, I would be just as happy to 
uh, withdrawal that, it, that we get, get uh, but I think the purpose of this proposed ordinance was to broaden the latitude of the enforcing agencies. That's one so there's part. A there's two, essentially two parts of this ordinance. So the one is to change the the to establish enforcement officers mm -hmm. and also to change it from criminal citation to a, a civil fine. I'd be happy with just leaving it as is if we were to. Um, I, I was concerned about the fines that were being offered as the as the remedy and the ordinance, even though we know that we're trying to do this as for educational purposes. So, I mean, if we were to leave the ordinance just with the broadened enforcement agency and changing it from a criminal to a civil um, violation, that would be fine. And then uh, we'd have, as we had the one fifty dollar fine with the uh, discretion to the, because I, th I, the point that I'd made all along is that um, it's not our, our intention is not to find people or to gain money from doing this. And I don't think that the fines in and of themselves um, really, really <coughs> serve the purpose that they might be. I, I don't know that they're the disincentive that we might think that they would be. So well, if there's a way to, uh, I don't know whether looking back and whether Councilor O'Donnell would, you know, I don't know whether Well, well we're still that. on this amendment, so we, mm -hmm. should, we right. should stay About for this morning. amendment. And well, for purposes of discussions, if there's if there's an opportunity to discuss this further in such a way that we uh, <coughs> get rid of the proposed fines altogether, and in and instead fall back on the present practice of the one fifty dollar fine, then I'm fine with withdrawing that uh, proposed amendment. Well, we can't know that until we get out of yeah. the amendment. So, uh, to withdraw well, the if, can it be now? can it be reintroduced? If I withdraw it, then I'll yeah, withdraw it for purposes of discussion. Once we can this this is Again, we just did this as a replay of the last right. week with Councilor Spector. So mm -hmm. I'll withdraw that, and um, maybe I'll offer then, can I withdraw it and then offer instead a substitute amendment? One that would uh, uh, strike the, I have to pull up the, the actual it's up ordinance. Here. Oh, it's up okay. Schedule. So uh, one that would. <coughs> One that would strike the second violation and subsequent violation uh, listings, and just instead of calling that first violation, just call it incidents of violation, fifty dollars. So th I think that that assumes that there can be uh, that can be numerous violations, and they're all the same. And we don't need to encode the discretion that we know that the enforce. We just have to s assume that all of those enforcing agencies that we're now allowing for, including the, um, um, right there. yeah, all. Of, okay, the DPW, Department of Public, DPW, Chief Police, and Parking Parking Enforcement Officers. They all have the same level of discretion that right now the police have. And I think that that's the point the mayor is trying to make. Okay, so the, the, the amendment is to essentially change the fee schedule mm -hmm. to make it per, vi per violation $50. $50. Second. Is there a second? And there's a second. Okay, discussion on the amendment. Uh, Council Sherrill and then Council O'Donnell. Can someone remind me again how it, what the ordinance as it stands right now? It, not this one, not the one that's. The one that's current law. The one that's current law, what does that one say? It's $50. $50. And, and the police, it's a per, citation. Per that day or just per? It's, it, yeah, it's the same, the same language about that 24-hour period, shoveling the full width and down to the pavement and curb cuts. So all that criteria is the same. That hasn't changed. The distinction is there has been a designation and time change mm -hmm. or uh, imperative time change for uh, uh, central business and general business. Mm -hmm. Right now it's uniform throughout the city of 24 hours from a storm event. And so there, and it says nothing about a warning, but the practice has just been that warnings were given and and rarely followed up by a citation, is that right? Or Well, part of, part of, historically part of the problem here is that the police were often reluctant. They gave warnings, they were reluctant right. because yeah, of the high sure. bar that had to be achieved in, in, in citing them criminally were more reluctant to give out tickets even to people who are chronically violating so, so in practice we think this change will mean that uh warnings will no longer be given out no no they will 
Uh, hang on a second. Constant. So, yeah, the, but they can't be the, tracked, as we learned. So, if if a warning can't be tracked, then how are they going to go back and give the citation? Well, uh, um, that is the question. As to, I think the tracking question is kind of important. And your honor, you said that they couldn't track, well, although they have tracked. I guess what, be what I would like to say is that I don't know that you. I just I don't know that you would put. I guess I'd rather just stick with the same system we have, $50 fine, and we'll monitor it. And after next winter, if there's a problem, we'll come back to you and say, let's try the other, let's try a, a progressive fine schedule. Um, that would be, I'd rather do that than try to figure out, than try to figure out a way that you get it, that we enshrine that there's a, a first, the first offense, the first 24 hours is a freebie, and then the second 24 hours, you get a $50 fine, mm -hmm. uh, which is what essentially you would be doing by enshrining it in this ordinance. And that really doesn't per <coughs> serve the public purpose of having sidewalks cleared after a storm, within 24 hours of a storm. So I, I'd be. Councilor Sheriff that. still has the floor. You guys will get your turn, it's, I promise. It's directly to yeah. her question, which well, I don't think you completely answered. Well, I know, we're getting to that. We're, we're, you didn't answer it, though, Councilor. I'm about to. <laughs> I just want to ensure that we are the making some sort of as, as far as the discretion, as far as the discretion to uh, uh, issue a warning, <coughs> what the mayor has proposed and what I believe Councilor Carney has proposed, it's, it's embedded in, it's understood. All enforcement agents, all enforcement officers have discretion on how they enforce, uh, particularly citations. Uh, there's a there's a pretty wide latitude, um, so that's still there and that has been there. So that would not disappear right. from this and that I, I mean I don't want to get into the weeds but since we are opening it, uh, it up to more people who can enforce it gets more complicated as to who you know who's seen this infraction and who's dealt with it and how do we keep track of that the police chief actually expressed a similar concern was how do all the agencies that are now um, would be empowered to enforce this how uh, would they everyone aggregate the citations and or warnings so that everyone's on the same page and everyone knows what's going on and uh, um, I believe we have the facilities and the means to actually do that I mean to be perfectly honest you could do it on your phone <laughs> your smartphones we can we can do that we have we have systems embedded in place where we can track um, cost, uh, you know, citizen complaints about issues. Mm -hmm. So it seems to me that it's not a huge leap to actually have something that corresponds with every enforcement agency so that they know there are, you know, have three different enforcement officers from three different agencies coming and fining or warning the same person. Councilor Spector. So I just wanted to clarify something. You usually do this so well, you usually get an oh, A plus, but only an A plus. There's a stroke. There's a stroke. I think your question was saying, so what's going to be different right. in this? And you had said this earlier, but I just wanted to, one of the differences, it decriminalizes it, which is one of the key right. components. It changes the enforcement. So that wasn't stated when you made the summary. That was all I was going to add to it. There is some difference here. Oh, right. I definitely understand. I just want to make sure that in practice there's going to be a difference. Mm -hmm. I thought I said that. And then um, just to clarify the, the amendment, the purpose of the amendment and is to take the focus off the fine, which I don't believe is such a disincentive anyway. Um, I, I think that people don't not shovel. I don't think people don't. Um, not shovel their sidewalk because they're uh, afraid of the fine. Did I say that correctly? I know I use a lot of negatives. But um, I think that they're generally they're either incapacitated or otherwise occupied or some other reason. But I think that the educational purpose, I mean, receiving <coughs> a warning, I think is incentive <coughs> to get someone to, uh, to shovel their walk. Again, I go back to my original concern. After a snowstorm, it's not very likely that we're going to issue, <clears throat> excuse me, 19,000 warnings. But I would venture to say that there may be that many areas of sidewalk that are not shoveled to the full width of mm -hmm. the sidewalk. That's correct. I mean, that's, there are thousands, tens of thousands that are not shoveled. And I don't think that we're going to be moving towards issuing that many warnings. It doesn't get to the crux of the matter. I, I think what it does is, and the whole purpose of this, was to look at a problem that was happening downtown, 
trying to see whether parking enforcement agents can issue the warning or issue the fine or whatever, or get the person to do what they have to do, or whether we had to wait for the police who are reluctant because it's a criminal, you know, falls in a, as a criminal disposition. So I think if we deal with, if it, if it addresses even that matter of some issues downtown, then it's some progress. It certainly doesn't tackle the larger issue, and I, it's, as I said earlier on, it's very complicated. I don't know that there's anything that we can do that would get the 90% the of the folks who are not taking care of the full width of the sidewalk presently to do so. Uh, okay. Council of the Bard, you, you all I'm set? Yeah. Uh, Council O'Donnell, do you have something to say? Um, I do, yeah. Um, Part of me thinks I shouldn't say anything because if, if we're just at $50, I'm sure that would make many of my constituents happy and I should just not say anything. I do, th I do though, think that, as Councilor Carney said, a lot of um, uh, this originated, well, I want to be careful choosing my words because it's not all about downtown, obviously. Mm -hmm. um, sidewalks are important throughout the city, but clearing um, a place where pedestrians frequently go downtown is... Um, especially important and that's one of the reasons why we made a distinction already at the last meeting when we talked about this between uh, uh, central business and residential parts of the city we have a stricter uh, timeline for clearing the snow downtown and on Main Street Florence than we do in residential parts of the city so just to the amendment which I understand to be simply striking everything under the under penalty and, and putting the words the word fifty dollars that's what the amendment is as, as I understand it. Just to say, instead of first violation, just say incidents of violation. And I think, and I would suggest as a friendly amendment, it should just be um, just $50 to correspond to the rest of the table because we'll find that, you know, in, in the ordinance that refers to this table, it says each 24-hour period uh, shall be considered a separate offense. So I think it's perhaps understood. But, but in any case, um, I'm wondering if there is any rationale to having a, a fine that's higher than 50 for downtown. Mm -hmm. If, in fact, that was one of the original ideas for having this escalation that went 50, uh, 100, 250. And I raise it as a question to the amendment for possible amendment. Um, and it's something that, again, other cities do. Um, so we may want to think about it here. But if we're just going to change it to $50, it seems like a reasonable um, a reasonable amendment. Yes. Again, I have strong, even though I offered the amendment, I have strong concerns about the whole ordinance anyway. I, I have concerns about the ordinance as it exists presently on the book just because I consider it to be something that we're unable to enforce citywide. It doesn't mean that I don't think it's a problem. It doesn't mean that I don't think that, it's, that we really need to have sidewalks cleared, but I just don't know how we can. I, I, well, in to, practice, it isn't something that... All right, well, that, that's straying a little bit from the, from the amendment, but I would speak to the amendment. Um, the reason for the escalating fines was that, something you alluded to, was that in many cases, $50 didn't seem to be enough to inspire some people, some property owners who, you know, let's be fair, that, you know, it may cost them $2,000 to clear their property. 2000 versus fifty. It's not a hard choice to make in some cases, and, and, and maybe, and the principal problem was in many cases absentee landlords or landlords of properties that, um, for instance, on King Street that use the sidewalk as snow storage. They plow their parking lot so their cars can get in, and they plow it into the sidewalk. And, um, you know, you threaten them with a $50 fine. They've got their customer base, but they don't necessarily have the same civic commitment or sense of civic commitment that the rest of the citizens do. And I'm part of the thing that's driving this debate is citizens, it wasn't, it wasn't the downtown businesses that were complaining about this proposal. It was actually citizens beyond the, the, the central business district. And their concern that they would suddenly be levied with this massive fine and some the uh, enforcement agents like flying monkeys would come down and start fining them for not shoveling the full width of the sidewalk. You're right. I mean, virtually every law, the same thing with speed limits. No one drives spot on, pops their needle, well, there are a few people who put their needle on the speed limit. But it's, it's, and there is discretion as to how you do that. 
the hope is is that everyone does drive the speed limit, and the hope is is that everyone does shovel their sidewalk to the full width and stuff. You, you it's, but I would say 95% of the people, if we're throwing numbers around like that, don't abide by the speed limit on spot on. Mm -hmm. But that's the nature of laws, and, it's the, and the impetus and the drive, as you said, is to try and encourage and improve, and that's the big point, to improve um, sidewalk clearing because there are in some cases that have been particularly, it's been particularly egregious, and we are literally confining people to their homes for the duration of the winter in some cases. And that, we are left with this inelegant solution. And so I think that an escalating fine actually does inspire, as, as you see the potential for something increasing in, in, in cost, may inspire people who to date have not been particularly moved by the potential of getting a $50 fine. Uh, and that would be, in the most cases, uh, downtown property owners who might not have been paying as close attention to some other people. So my preference is actually to keep the fee schedule. Um, and with the, with the embedded understanding that there is discretion. Um, Councilor, actually, Councilor Murphy had his hand up first, and then Councilor O'Donnell. And Councilor LaBarge, are you <coughs> raising your hand this time? Okay. Well, I mean, fifty dollars for every twenty-four hour period you don't shovel does eventually add up, you know. So, it, uh, if it's if it's somebody that just isn't going to do it, it's not like it doesn't add up over time, uh, especially if one violation runs for a week. I mean, the fine does add up, and I imagine you know somebody that it that is that much in the face of this regulation. You can bet whoever's writing these violations is going to make it a point to show up every day and, <laughs> and and add to it if somebody's really is really being bad about trying to make it safe for people to move around so council done it's like to suggest that maybe we could um, move forward on Councillor Carney's amendment because if we voted on it and let's if it were adopted we could always return and, and consider an escalating fine mm -hmm for downtown if in fact <coughs> that was something we wanted to do, even with the adoption of the amendment. Mm -hmm. uh, Council of Barch to the no, amendment? It's okay. You're okay? Yep. Okay. Any, any other further discussion on the amendment? The amendment is to change, to eliminate the fee schedule and leave it as $50 per incidence of violation. Yep. Correct. Mm -hmm. Council of Yeah, I just, I'm just quibbling with the, with the words. I think it should just be $50, but I put it out there for so, so it would say incidents of violation, fifty dollars. Actually, if you look at the table, it are, if you look at forty dash five, yes, the only time you have any words is if you have a progressive fine system. Right. right. If you just have one fine, you just have fifty dollars. So penalty, fifty dollars. Right. Okay. That's it. Just to be no words, just the numeric, fifty dollars. So that's the amendment. Okay. Yes, that's fine. Okay. All right. We're going to put <laughs> clerk has managed that. <laughs> uh, is the, the preference for a roll call or voice vote? Uh, let's do a roll call. Roll call. This is just the, uh, this is just the amendment on the fee. On the fine, I'm sorry. Councilor Sheriff. No. Councilor Spector. Yes. Yes. Councilor Dwight. No. Councilor Quine. Yes. Councilor Lobart. Yes. Councilor Murphy. Yes. Councilor O'Donnell. Yes. The motion carries. So the amendment the amendment stands. So now we move back to the original order. So now the order is reading that it's a fifty dollar fine. Are there is there any other discussion? Councilor O'Donnell? I'd like to propose an amendment for debate. Um, the amendment would simply um, put above the word $50 the following. For property located in the Central Business District or in Florence Zone General Business, and then what had previously been there, first violation 50, second violation per fiscal year 100, subsequent violation per fiscal year, I actually say 200. And then it would say, for other property, 50. In other words, just split it in half um, for residential property. It's always going to be 50, like we just put in there with the amendment. 
but we retain the escalation, which Council President and others have brought up uh, uh, might be important for parts of the city, which it's especially important to keep clear. I'll, I'll second that. Motion's made and seconded to the, um, to the amendment. Uh, Councilor Murphy had to stand up first, and then you can go. Mm -hmm. <coughs> I can understand the spirit of that if we're saying that those, those locations see a lot more traffic because they're commercial in nature and people are compelled to go there. Mm -hmm. and, and I might I might agree with that, but I think for the purposes of application, I'd like to leave it at $50, at least for the first season, and see if it's actually warranted to do that. I, I don't disagree if it remains a problem in those high traffic areas, we may want to do that. But I'd sort of like to see the problem appear before we solve it. So I'd rather just leave it the way it is for a winter and then learn from our experience. And if we need to do it, I'm for it. Thanks, um, If we are going to um, have the separate uh, fee schedule for the central business, I mean, just based on some of the discussion we had, some of the more flagrant violations and those that affect more people and have a lot of foot traffic, would also include highway business, the uh, King Street corridor. Um, it's nearly impossible to walk along King Street in areas where the sidewalk has been taken over by snow. Groups. So I would uh, actually, if you if if you don't mind uh, having that be beyond just central business, say central business and highway business area. So that's a friendly amendment. Yes, absolutely. Next step. Thank you. So including so that fee schedule would apply to highway business as well your honor as the uh, author of the legislation could I speak to this yep I actually I, I just will tell you I the progressive fine schedule was actually more directed at residential than it was um, that was my I, I didn't view it as a problem in the commercial areas I actually viewed it more as a problem in uh, particularly the owner you know, non-owner occupied rental apartments and rental units, um, and that that so uh, so anyway, I I don't support a two-tiered system for business and for residential. Um, you have no objections to a two-tiered timing schedule though for removal though. No, I think the timing schedule be, just because of the timing of when business is open, I'm fine with that. That that makes sense, and that's what business owners want. I think that's fine. It doesn't make sense that you would have a requirement that just based on the 24-hour duration would happen at you know one o'clock in the afternoon during a business day. So I get that completely. I just don't. I don't believe we need two tiers for. Again, I'm trying to keep this as simple. Um, and now you're adding other zones of the city. Um, and there's also. I mean, there's other besides highway business. There's business park. There's a bunch of other commercial. And then it just becomes a really complicated enforcement issue. So um, I'm willing to offer the $5 Amesbury fine if that makes it simpler. But um, oh, well, but again, I'm, I'm thank you. you. Can see, I'd rather, I prefer to keep it simple. So, um, so the mayor asks us to do KISS, um, keep it stupid, keep it simple, stupid. And then it's so, um, <clears throat> Actually, I have a counterpoint to that. Um, in fact, actually, Councilor Carney pointed out, and she, I believe she's correct, and of course this is empirically understood, um, but there have been a number of egregious violations on highway business, and, 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 there, and the concerns that we were originally addressing, Councilor O'Donnell, Councilor Adams, and myself, that we were speaking with the downtown business owners was, there are people who do not conform, and by the way, to your point, we wait until see if the problem's manifested. It has manifested under the current rule of fifty dollars, and it's been ongoing. This is not. This is the reason. It's the whole impetus for creating this, originally. So it's <clears throat> we can wait. It's certainly, and and maybe that's the way this shakes out and it ends up being fifty dollars, and we can wait and see. But my pressing powers say to me that this will be not much different <clears throat> than what we experienced in past years. Exactly. Um, and so. And I and and to the mayor's point, he's absolutely right that there are absentee landlords who have uh, residences uh, where the residents frequently shovel to their car 
and that's it, one shovel width just to get them to their car. We, we even know some of them. Um, and I think one of the important features here that, of this new ordinance that we haven't mentioned tonight is that these uh, fines go directly to the owners of the property now, as opposed to holding the tenants responsible. That's up to the, the owner of that property to, be, to uh, carry that burden. Um, the, they have to make that as a condition of lease agreement, but the person who, who is cited is the owner, not just, it's not the person living <coughs> in the apartment who may not care, who's not gonna be there, um, who won't pay the fine and the fine goes unpaid. So I, I think in, that's worth noting because I think that that adds some strength to this that hasn't existed previously. Councilor Murphy. Mm -hmm. Well, I think this will be different because we're tripling the number of enforcement officers for this and we're all make also making it a non-criminal violation and i think that was some of the reluctance that the police had before was you know it was a pretty nasty thing to lay a criminal violation on somebody but now that it's not criminal there's so many people enforcing it i think it will be different uh just by that very nature alone i might also point out to you that uh, it might not be the case in central business but i know in general business in florence there's a number of residents residential properties that are in uh, general business in Florence. So, you know, this, this <coughs> higher level or higher standard is going to wind up falling on some residents in addition to those businesses because at least up there, uh, there are homes in general business. Uh, Councilor Glenn has something. Yeah. Uh, I just um, very briefly, I think that we can talk for a long time about the the levels of fine and and having two tiered systems three tiered systems all of that but to me what makes the most sense is um what what's actually going to be a deterrent for folks is the implementation so just to i think to follow up on what councillor murphy is saying i think if we have uh police officers we have parking uh enforcement officers and what's the third uh, uh DPW, 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 dpw folks really paying attention and really be starting to issue these fines on a regular basis i think that's what's going to make the difference and so i i feel like um you know creating a, a different system for the business districts is not it's that's that's not going to make the difference it's the implementation on the ground that's going to make the difference Councilor Dunn. Um, I suggest we just vote on the amendment. Can I just kind of summarize quickly? Yeah. And maybe restate the amendment. Um, I, mean, I, I understand the mayor's objections, and I think his his objections are are, are well registered, and um, I'm sure they'll they'll have an impact on whether the amendment is adopted um, as they should. And there's kind of a strange effect of amending someone else's ordinance, but the council. Councillor Dwight's point, um, you know, the council has been involved in this question as well. Um, and so that's the spirit with which I offer the amendments. Um, but I say we just vote on it. Um, and so if I can just restate it, the penalty column would read penalty for property located in the central business district, highway business, or Florence zone general business. First violation, $50. Second violation per fiscal year, 100. Subsequent violation per fiscal year, 200. For other property, Call the question on the amendment. I believe the council already did. So um, that's high. <coughs> so that is we're voting on the amendment as stated. So uh, roll call on that, please. Councilor Spector. No. Councilor Carney. Yes. Councilor Dwight. Yes. Councilor Klein. No. Councilor Labarge. No. Councilor Murphy. No. Councilor O'Donnell. Yes. Councilor Chair. No. So the amendment fails. Back to the original order. Uh, so we're now the original order stands as amended, fifty dollars, the whole shebang. So are there any other amendments discussed or considered? Everyone's okay? Want me to call the roll call here? Yeah. So as it stands, it's now with the amendment from March 5th, which was relevant to the time, uh, the deadline time for uh, downtown. It is now saying simply that the fine, the penalty is $50, and the rest of it stands. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
Roll call, please. Councilor Carney. Yes. Councilor Gwynn. Yes. Councilor Klein. Yes. Councilor Lobar. Yes. Councilor Murphy. Yes. Councilor O'Donnell. Yes. Councilor Shera. Yes. Councilor Speck. Yes. The motion passes in second reading and hopefully doesn't go into effect until the first snowstorm <laughs> in uh, late March next year. <laughs> <laughs> yes. so, um, now we come up to another contested ordinance of the pertaining to the bicycle and pedestrian facilities uh, with amendments recommended by transportation parking back on January 20th uh, with amendments also recommended by the planning board uh, February 12th, 2015 without recommendation from the Committee on Rules, Orders and Appointments and Ordinances on February 18th and with amendments by the City Council at the March 5th, 2015. And this is the second reading. I'll accept the motion, put it on the floor. So moved. Second. Any further discussion on this? Is everyone okay? <laughs> Ready, Pam? Roll call. Councilor Dwight. Yes. <laughs> Councilor Klein. Yes. Councilor Labar. Yes. Councilor Murphy. No. Councilor Yes. Councilor Sheriff. Yes. Councilor Spector. Yes. Councilor Carney. Yes. That passes in second reading. So now we uh, come up to uh, the second reading for the order to accept Northampton's multi hazard mitigation plan for 2015. I'll accept a motion. So moved. Second. Any discussion on this? Roll call, please. Councilor Klein. Yes. 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 Okay. That passes uh, in um, second reading as well. So we're, <laughs> we're we're picking up the momentum that we lost just <laughs> back there. Uh, now we have the ordinance pertaining to lost parking ticket fine. Mm -hmm. uh, this is a positive recommendation Second. for the unrules and orders, appointments, and ordinances. There's a motion made. And seconded. Uh, any further discussion? Roll call, please. Council Lavarge. Yes. 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 No updates from this guy. Any committee chairs got anything to say? Don't you dare. <laughs> All right, information request, new business. I'll accept the motion to adjourn. Move to adjourn. Second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Thank you all very much.